In this series of videos, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started in the world of Adobe Animate. Let's do it. Tip -tot. Part 1. Basic Animation and Setup Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today we're starting a new journey inside of Adobe Animate 2020. Now I know I've done a few intro to Adobe Animate series, but if I'm perfectly honest, I keep coming back to it because I'm never really happy with them. Uh, also, additionally, um, Adobe Animate has had a ridiculous update um, for 2020 and there's loads of cool stuff in you can do. Uh, the most important thing for me is the new brush engine, which works really well, much better than the previous one. So I thought what I'd do is take another sort of dive into the world of um, animation and show you guys how to use Adobe Animate 2020. We're going to be recreating the animation you saw in the beginning. Um, but what I won't be diving into is like the principles of animation, frankly, because I'm not very good at them. I will link in the description a series that has a fantastic um, expert opinion on um, things like squash and stretch and, and stuff like that. Um, that I recommend you watch. Uh, if you want to get used to the software, learn some basic animation, get started, then this is the series for you. So we're going to go from the ground up uh, and I've, all I've done here is just open up Adobe Animate. And the first thing we're going to do is create our canvas. Now you can download a sketch from my website, which I will link for you now. Um, using this sketch, you can follow along what we're doing. Uh, and the size that I'd recommend you work out is either 1920 by 1080 or 2560 by 1440. Now it doesn't actually really matter because um, Adobe Animate works in vector rather than raster, which means that the shapes and things you create are based on mathematical equations rather than actual pixels being painted in with color, which means it's infinitely scalable. Um, but it's best to start, you might as well work in the native resolution you're gonna be working at. Let's leave it at 24 frames per second, which is the classic animation um, frame rate, even though we'll look, learn about working on twos later, which actually means it's 12 frames per second, but that's very boring. Uh, and when you hit create, you'll be opened up to this interface here. Now, if at any point in this tutorial series, you don't see any of the windows that I see, you can find them under the windows panel here, but I am working from the essentials default workspace, so you should be fine. Go up to your um, zoom in window here and just choose fit in window. You can hold control and zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, which is what I do, or control plus and minus. And we'll just explain briefly what these parts of the interface are before we get to any animation. You've got your tool panel down the left and we'll explore these in detail. So I won't go too far into it now. You've got normal things like your brushes, erasers, your shape tools, uh, paint buckets, fills, eyedroppers, all that sort of stuff. Uh, then you have your properties panel, which basically is where you'll be spending most of your time. Uh, this has got the same as the rest of the Adobe suite now where it updates depending on what you have selected. It's quite useful and comprehensive. Next to that, you should have your library where it's going to store all of your symbols and things like that, which we'll get to later on. And to the right, you'll have your various control panels, most important of which is color, swatches, transform, align, all that sort of stuff. Uh, down at the bottom here, you've got your timeline, and this is where you're going to set up your animation. Um, but apart from that, your big white area is your canvas, and that's all you really need to um, get started. So the first thing we're going to do is import our sketch. I'm just going to take the sketch from the website and drag and drop it over our canvas and it will load it into your um, canvas area for you automatically. You'll also notice that if you go to your library now, you're going to have a PNG inside that library, um, which uh, you can recollect that asset from later on. I'm just going to put my phone over there so it doesn't distract any, us any further. Um, with this imported now, it's going to um, fill in this little dot down here, which you noticed on the timeline. Now there's a basic way of remembering and working in animate is um, everything you do is drawn on a frame. Okay. So if you understand what basic animation is, it's actually a lie. It's a series of still images placed one after each other very quickly to simulate the idea of motion, which doesn't actually take place. The way you control that simulation of motion inside of Adobe animate is with your timeline down here. So if I just drag us a little bit of extra space, anyone working in any other Adobe um, software will understand the idea of layers and um, anyone who's done a bit of After Effects will understand the fact that things change over time based on keyframes and stuff that you drop in. Um, the way Adobe Animate works is there are basically two types of frame. There is a keyframe and there is a normal frame. Now, a keyframe is what you want to use when you want any change in animation. So if I just, I'll just delete this for now because we can bring it back later. 
If I just draw with my brush tool a basic shape, okay, um, it would help if I turned my graphics tablet on. There we go. Um, if I just draw a basic shape, this circle, okay, uh, you can see that we have a layer here with a frame here with a dot in it. And if I select that dot, it's going to highlight what we have drawn. Now, I can create extra frames of content here to make this drawing last longer. Uh, and you can do that by right clicking and choosing insert frame, or you can just hit the shortcut F5. If I press just to say, you know, let's do it at one second in length so I can remove those extra frames to have one second of animation here. If I hit enter, which is the button for previewing the animation, you'll notice that nothing changes because that frame is being repeated over and over again. And it's only taking that last keyframe, which is what we've got on frame one. If I were to insert a new keyframe, the shortcut for which is F6, or a new blank keyframe with nothing on it, um, which shortcut is F7, you'll notice that that frame, the content on that frame disappears. So I'll just do that again. I select the frame I want, I hit F6, that will duplicate the last frame. It'll basically turn whatever was onto here onto a new keyframe. And if you hit F7 or delete it, it will turn it into a blank keyframe. Now, if I draw a different image and I add in some more normal frames, let's go to 48 with F5, you'll notice that when I play, that circle turns to a square when the next keyframe is struck by that timeline header. That's all it is. That's all animation is changing that image at a point in time. Now, of course, that's very, very simple, very, very easy. What we're going to do is using our sketch that we imported in earlier, we're going to recreate this entire scene and do this entire animation. So how are we going to do that? We're basically going to do it with a series of complicated layers and um, symbols inside of which they're their own little unique looping animations to bring together a huge animation. So basically what I'm saying is, Follow along and things will start to make sense um, as we get deeper into the software. Try not to be intimidated at the start by everything you know that you see in front of you. So first things first, um, you've seen what the final product looked like. If you go up to your swatches palette in the top right hand corner, you'll notice you'll have a default selection of colors. What I did was create my own little folder um, from the uh, colors that were in that image, which you can also download from my website. Um, and I just, using my eyedropper tool, which is the letter I, I clicked the color that I wanted on the image, and you can see that turns it to white over here. I went to my swatches panel, and I hit new, and you can see it adds a new swatch, and then I just dragged that into its own folder. Okay, that's all I did, and I use that just so I can quickly select all these different colors that we're gonna need. Now, what I'm also gonna do is probably open up that swatches palette and just drag and drop it so that it's a floating window, and I'm gonna close down the default swatches because we don't need them. I'm just going to make it nice and small and pop it in the right hand corner at the top just so that we can work from it directly. Alternatively, you can drag it to below your library or properties panel. So it's always um, over here or even above it might be more useful for you. It just depends however you want to work. So let's zoom out by hitting show frame on our zoom panel here. And let's start to think about how we're going to deconstruct this image that we've got here. We can see we're working in sort of three planes of existence. We've got the foreground where we have these large trees and this bird. We have the midground where we have these hills um, and the sort of river running down to the ocean where we have the background of our content. Now, we're actually going to be using a lot more than three layers, but for now, let's just understand that these uh, might be our basic layers. So I'm going to go down to my layers palette here and I'm just going to click the plus button a few times and I'm going to make sure that we name all of our layers. It's very important. So I'm going to double click on this one and call it sketch. Uh, I'm actually going to probably uh, let's leave that on the bottom for now and I'm going to click the padlock to lock it. On the layer above that, we're going to build our layers as we go rather than building all at the start just so we know we don't have a load of extraneous layers lying around. And we're going to work on the trees first because that seems the most logical thing to me um, is to start with the easy stuff. Alternatively, you can work backwards up, which is another way. So you could do the sky first and keep drawing things in front of it. We might do it that way, actually, because that makes more sense from a construction point of view. So that's what we'll do first. We'll double click and we'll rename this layer sky. Now, what I like to do is just select a large portion of my um, timeline here and just hit F5, just so that it looks like we've got some frames to work with, even if there's no animation going on at the moment. Let's select our sky layer. I'm going to go up to my color palette and I'm going to choose a layer for the sky. Now, just on my other screen, 
just so that I recreate this in the same style as the original, I'm just going to bring up this reference image that I've got created here, just so I get it looking somewhat like what you saw in the beginning. Uh, and on the first frame of my um, animation here, I'm just going to hit B to bring up my brush tool. Now, one thing I have done is there are two types of brush in Adobe Animate. There is the classic brush, which you can see here, which has fairly limited, um, fairly limited sort of controls over it. As you can see, you've got size, you've got smoothing, and that's about it. If you hit Shift B, however, that will bring up the um, fluid brush, which you can see is the new brush engine in Adobe Animate. You can control things like size, stability, how much it smooths and rounds out angles, uh, whether or not you want the brush to taper off, all sorts of things like that. I recommend using this brush. It's much better, much smoother. And as you can see, you create really nice, beautiful lines with it. Um, an interesting shortcut is open and close square bracket, which will increase and decrease the size of your brush. And hitting control plus and control minus will zoom you in and out. So if you hit shift B to bring up your brush, first thing we're going to do is just paint in the sun here. So what I'm going to do is grab my sort of normal dark red color from that palette. Yeah, that seems about right. And we're just going to see if we can get used to drawing with the brush. So I'm just going to start drawing out a rough circle. Now, obviously, if there's a bit that's under another layer, you're never going to see it, but you might choose to animate that differently later on. So I just hit Control Z there um, because I wasn't quite happy with the line that I draw. So maybe we can zoom out a little bit. And we can just start to roughly eke out what we want. Now, I'm using a graphics tablet. You can draw with a mouse. I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend seeing if you can get a graphics tablet. You can get them for quite cheap nowadays. If I bring up K, hit K on my keyboard, that brings up the paint filler and I can just fill in that shape that I've just drawn. Pressing Shift B will take me back to my fluid brush tool. Hitting V will bring up your selection tool and you can use that to move things around. Hitting Q will bring up your transform tool and you can use that to squash and scale things however you'd like. The usual Control Z, Control Y is undo and redo. So for example, I could undo that until it's back in the position that I want. Now, you can see here, that in our original sketch, if I just bring that up, we've got these lines around the sun here, which kind of are static at the moment, but that's going to be our first bit of animation, mainly because it's really easy. <laughs> and secondly, because it makes sense to do all this now, so you don't have to come back to it later. It'll also introduce us to the concept of symbols. So as you can see at the moment, we've just got our one shape here. Now, if we wanted to, we could go sort of to the next frame um, and hit F7 and we can start drawing our new picture. But as you can see, first of all, we can't see what our old frame looked like. So if we were to then move back and forth between frames using the comma and full stop keyframes, uh, it'd be kind of hard to track what that's going to look like over time. That's where a really interesting tool called Onion Skin comes in, which is this sort of toggle option down here. If you turn that on, you'll notice you get this sort of new effect um, showing the previous and next frames in different colors. Now, if you find this distracting, you can right click on this and choose advanced settings and set these different things. Like for example, I quite like them to be gray uh, and sort of a, like a lighter gray for the next and previous frames. So we can do a little bit less distracting basically. Um, it's completely up to you. However, um, it, I think you can reset to default um, quite easily in the settings. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave previous on green and next on like a bright blue just so it's easy for you guys to see what's going on in the video. So something like that is probably good for me. I'm also going to show the previous two. Oh God, excuse me. That was the uh, automatic desktop bringing up there. The previous two and the next two frames is fine. And I don't really care about the starting opacity. We'll decrease by 20% each frame. Sure, that's fine. Okay. So now we can see what our previous and next frames look like. So we can use that as a guide for when we want to draw our next frame. Okay. However, we're not going to do it like this. What we're going to do is draw our first frame, make sure that we're completely happy with it. So I'm going to draw a nice circle. Now you could use the shape tool to do all this. But I quite like the um, natural sort of curve you get by doing it by hand. Then I'm going to click the shape and hit F8 or right click and convert to symbol. Now, any of you who are familiar with After Effects can think of a symbol like a pre-composition. For those who aren't familiar, 
you can think of a symbol as a normal timeline that you have contained inside a wrapper, and then that has its own timeline of animation. What this allows you to do is keep your main timeline really simple and neat so that you're not then fighting with yourself later on when you come to edit and adjust things. For now, just follow along and it'll make sense once we create a few more things. So I'm just going to call this graphic sun and I'm going to make sure it's on type graphic. There is type movie clip and there is type button. I like to use graphic most of the time because it will preview when you hit enter, whereas movie clip won't. Buttons are for interactivity, which we're not having in this one. But you can apply different effects to a movie clip than you can to a graphic. So there's certain circumstances for each. I'm just going to call this one sun and hit OK. You can see now that it's surrounded by a blue box. And if I go to draw something new, it will create different shapes. Now, basic rule is if you've got a symbol on a layer, you want it to be by itself on that layer, just so that you can do things like tweening later on if you need to. Now you'll notice something clever. If I double click on this shape, our timeline changes completely and everything else sort of grays out a little bit, but also we go back to our editable shape. You can see at the top as well, we've got scene one and then the word sun. I can drop back to scene one, which is outside of my symbol. And you can see we're back to our previous um, timeline as well. Double click to enter. Now, if we do our animation in here, because it's a graphic, if we did say two frames of animation, so I'm just going to hit F5 once, then on frame three, I'm going to hit F7 and F5 again. That gives us two, well, four frames to work with, but this is that concept of working on twos that I was talking about. You may have a 24 frame document, but working 12 frames per second, so 12 drawings per second is the classic way they do things for general animation. And then you can speed up to, you know, a, a drawing every frame if you want to do something really detailed or flowing. Um, if I draw now our next shape, and I kind of want these to stay in place, just maybe jitter a little bit. So I'm trying to trace this as accurately as I can. Remembering, of course, the ocean's going to be above the bottom, so that doesn't really matter. Hitting K to fill that in and B to go back to our brush. So now you can see we've got two frames. If I hit enter, they just sort of flip back and forth a little bit. Let's drop back out of our scene. And you can see that we've only got four frames of animation inside our symbol, but here we've got lots and lots of frames, almost 100. Good thing about symbols is they will loop forever if you start to play them. OK. What that means is when you go back inside that symbol, you can do two frames, three frames, four frames of looping animation, uh, and that will be reflected and respected in your main timeline. So I'm not quite happy with how this shape lines up with the previous one. So I can turn on, like flip back and forth between my onion skin. I can see uh, that there's a bit at the top, just holding space there to pan around, by the way. There's a bit at the top that doesn't quite line up very nicely. You can see it's quite low there and quite high here. So if I hover over the edge of my shape, you'll see it'll turn to this curved line. What you can do is you can actually squish and stretch after you've drawn. So I'm just going to bring that somewhat closer to where it was previously. Just going to start bringing these in like that. So that, yes, there is still a little bit of flicking, but not too much. OK, that looks pretty good. So we'll just zoom back in. I'm going to add two more frames of animation to this. So F7, F5, and then F7, F5 again. Two more frames of animation to this, bring up my pen tool with B, and I'm just going to start to follow as closely as I can the original shape. It's pretty good. And let's do that again for the last frame. There we go. Let's take a look at what that looks like. OK, if you want to see that looping, you can turn on this loop option, which brings up the little two arrows here. You can drag them to cover the frames you want to loop. And then when you hit enter again, it will all loop in place. So you can see that first frame sort of jumps down a little bit. So what we're going to do on that first frame is bring in just a little bit more. Oops, that's a bit too much, maybe. It's a little bit more of a shape up there. Just so it jumps about a bit less. That's OK. And then we'll just tweak that. So as you can see, you can tweak as much as you want, as often as you want. It looks pretty good. Now, just because that bottom bit's really distracting, what I'm going to do is grab my V um, on the keyboard, draw a box over a section of the drawing and hit delete. That's going to give us a nice hard shape on the bottom. And I'm going to do that for each frame, just roughly in the same place. 
So it's slightly less distracting for us. We can focus on the actual edge that we want to focus on. Okay, let's add a new layer on top. And we'll just hit F7 on every other frame to create the same um, keyframing as we've got on the layer beneath it. On this layer, I'm going to start to add these little shapes around the edge here. So just bringing in a little bit of extra motion. And this idea of like bleeding between the colors that you can see on this original sketch here, like so. We're going to go through and do that on all the frames. So I'm just hitting um, full stop to pan forward and backwards and just roughly again, trying to copy what these shapes look like. If you're having trouble drawing at certain angles, you can press uh, H or shift H to bring up the rotation tool, which will rotate your canvas uh, around so that you can draw more accurately. This combined with the space bar to pan is actually really quite useful. So you can hit um, H to pan, shift H to rotate, and then H again to pan. And we'll just make these shapes somewhat the same on each frame. So rotate the canvas there, space bar to move it, go back to the brush with B. Just because your hand obviously prefers drawing at a particular angle. So you might find it a bit more comfortable. I'm being fairly rough with this. You can obviously take as much time as you want, but you don't really want to see me just drawing over and over the same line. Uh, what I've done for a shortcut as well is I've taken my fluid brush off of Shift B and change the shortcut for that to be just B. Um, you can do that quite easily in the preferences. I don't think I need to show you how to do that. Um, if you want to get back to normal, by the way, as well on this rotation tool up here, you can just click rotation up here. I think if you double click it, it will rotate back to the standard rotation. So you don't have to worry about it being squiff forever, basically. So there we go. We have our basic shapes. We're going to add a new layer on top again hitting F7 to add in some blank keyframes. And now we're going to bring in these lighter shapes that you can see on our reference sketch that overlap from the previous layer. We'll do these now because it was just to save us a bit of time later on, basically. So we're back inside here, go to our brush tool. But now we go back up to our palette and we select the next lighter color. So this is the color that we've already got. Select our lighter one here. And just inside our sun, just a little bit on each frame, we're just going to bring in some of that light as if it's leaking over the shape. And because we've done it on its own layer, the onion skin is going to be really clear and obvious for us, which is good. And we can just start to fill out these shapes a little bit. Let's look at that. That looks pretty good to me. So if we drop out of our canvas and go back to scene one, we can double click our rotation up here. We can see now that our little sun is going to keep jingling about. Uh, oops, we've got our looping turned on still. We'll turn that off. Our little sun's going to keep jingling about in the background there for um, the rest of the animation until it reaches the end of the timeline. So we've named this one Sky, correct? Now, because we probably won't be moving these at all in this main timeline, we can have more than one symbol on the same layer. OK, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the next shape here and carry on that process that I just did exactly the same, but for the rest of the sky. Uh, I'll do that in time lapse so that this video isn't a million hours long, and then I'll drop back out once uh, we've got that done. One thing I will say, however, if you don't put something into a um, Symbol, you'll notice the symbol will always be on top of any loose shape that you've got on your layer. If you have many symbols, though, you can arrange them however you like, just with the normal arrange, bring to front, center back, that sort of thing. So we'll pop that sun back where he was. Uh, there. And we'll draw our next section of sky using that same color that's leaking into the sun there. With just a big swooping arc. If you're not happy, again, you could use the shape tool to do this. Um, and I'll just show you that as well. Also, if you hold shift, it will lock 
your paintbrush to an axis, which is a nice way to do a clean bottom section there. Um, but if you go over to your shape tool and you can just draw a circle, holding shift will make a perfect circle. If you've got a stroke down here though, you will have to delete that stroke. And then of course you can use the transform tools to line that up to the shape that you want. And you can use that as a bit of a shortcut. I just quite look like the hand drawn look. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to turn this one into a symbol once I'm happy with its basic shape. Which I think I am. Maybe we'll have this come down a bit smoother, but of course it will be behind a hill, so it probably doesn't actually matter. Um, and we'll just have that be roughly the same height of the sun. Let's hit F8. We'll call this one, uh, what do I call that sun? So we'll just call this one sky mid graphic. And we can hit control and open square bracket to push that back in the layer stack, or you can hit arrange center back. Oh, sorry, it's not control. Uh, open square, that's after effects. It's control plus down, which sends it back in the layer stack. My mistake. If we open up this again, you'll notice well, we can do the same process. I'm just going to set up all my keyframes now. And in time lapse mode, you'll see me make this. So just dropping out of the time lapse here to say that I've done the first um, section, as you can see here, it's got animated bits on it jiggling around. This section I just turned into a symbol but haven't animated yet. What I'm going to do is take one of these blank layers, drag it underneath the sky layer and call it sky base. On here, what I'm going to do is just grab my rectangle tool, make sure that there's got no stroke applied, which you can do by selecting the color over here and just cancelling it out. I'm going to make sure the fill, however, is set to our light um, sky color, like so, because what we need to do for this bottom bit at the very edges of the drawing here, we don't need to animate that because this orange one will be the last animated section. So what we'll do is on this layer beneath, we'll just draw ourselves a rectangle. If we hit V and select it, we can do the positioning size exactly. So we can say width 2560, Height 1440, just fill the whole background with it. X0, Y0. And that will fill the entire background of our um, page here. What we can do then is lock and hide it because we don't need it for now. Uh, but when we finish animating the rest of this, that will be our background, basically. OK, so back to the animation. <laughs> So jumping back up to scene one and turning our background on, we can see that we've got our sort of dancing animated sky background. What I'm going to do is grab my sketch layer and just drag that to the top, however. Uh, and I'm going to turn our sketch here into a symbol. Just going to hit F8. This one's going to be a graphic and we're just going to call it background. The reason that I can do this is so that I can then reduce the opacity of it by going to color effects alpha and dragging that down. And it will just allow us to see our sketch ever so slightly over the top of our um, drawn footage so that we can see how that looks in relation to the rest of the content that we're creating. That looks pretty good. The sky, I'm happy with that. Again, I would have spent a lot more time on it if this was for um, my own project. But as this is just for the tutorial, I'm kind of not rushing through it, but I'm definitely spending less time than I usually would. Um, we're going to add the C in now, just so that we don't have this ugly, uh, crappy bottom of our line here. Uh, and that's going to have a similar animation process to um, what we've done for the Dancing Sky here, but I want them to move a bit slower and smoother. So we're going to use something called uh, tweening to do that, shape tweening. Hopefully it'll work. It's a bit uh, temperamental. So we're going to, on this layer above our sky and sky base, we'll make a new layer called ocean 
Uh, and for this one, we will just use a rectangle because we can just tweak it. We will grab our ocean color, which is the lightest of our three greens. And I'm just going to drag myself a square that roughly lines up. You can see in the original script that um, it wasn't exactly a straight line. So that's good because what we can do with our shape is bend it to our will. Like so, if you wanted to add in a little bit of uh, uh, let's hide our sketch layer just so we can click this, add in a little bit of curvature if you wanted to, which I think we do. That looks pretty good. Now we only see this bit of the ocean, so I'm not going to bother drawing any bits over here. Uh, I'm just going to add some nice effects to this. So again, we'll hit F8, turn this into a symbol called ocean. And inside that symbol, oops, excuse me, clicked on the wrong layer there. Hide that sketch again. Inside this symbol, we'll add um, uh, some lines on top of it that look like our ocean. So just to reference what that's going to look like, essentially, we're going to have a few lines along the top here and then some sort of wavy lines just in the sea in this rough middle area. Um, so what we can do is drop inside our ocean, create a new layer. And as you can see, you can kind of still see the sketch from behind. So what we'll do is we'll grab our dark color here uh, and on the new layer above, we'll just draw a guideline of where we can roughly see. So it'll be somewhere around there will be the visible type of our ocean area. So we'll just overshoot a little bit. We'll lock this layer and we'll click this little option here, which turns uh, just the outlines on. So we can clearly see that it's not something we've drawn. Then if we add in a bunch of frames using F5, that will help us and we can rename this layer guide. OK, so this is going to be the base of our ocean. So we'll rename that base and on top of it, we'll add in um, the ocean lines that we want to be static. So I'll grab our second darkest ocean color, hit B, hit Shift H to rotate because I prefer drawing downwards. And then I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Oops, excuse me. Uh, and I'm just going to just the edge of the ocean here. I'm just going to draw in some little green lines that start and stop just to add in oops, excuse me i messed that one up just to add in a little bit extra contrast between this and the sky if you mess up ever so slightly you can just select it with the select tool and then move that up and down until you're happy which i think i am so i'll see what that looks like okay that looks okay. So the hill is going to come in there. The hill is going to come in there. That's pretty good. So that one we will leave static, I think. Unless on this one we'll do the same that we did before. I'll hit F7 on two frames along. Uh, and I will just fill four frames, which will then loop uh, of this kind of edge water shimmering. Which should look pretty cool. So, oops, that one didn't actually draw, did it? There we go. F7 there. To just start filling these in. A bit hard to see when the colors are uh, very similar. But that's okay. Shimmering effects here look pretty good. And here also. OK, so with those four frames, uh, I imagine what we're going to do inside this symbol is going to take more than four frames. So for these four, I'm just going to select them all, including an extra frame at the end and holding alt. I'm going to drag them so that they repeat over and over again. And then we'll see what that looks like. Just because inside of this particular symbol, we're probably going to do other stuff that's going to last longer than those eight frames. So that rippling looks quite good. Let's see what this looks like. I haven't done it before. So on one layer, I'm going to draw myself a nice long ripple, something like something like that. OK, smoothed out a bit too much. So what we might actually do for this one is just turn the stabilization down briefly, which will allow some of my shaky handedness to come back in. That looks pretty good. Then on, say, well, let's just make it this frame 48. Let's add a new keyframe that is blank, F7. OK, 
then we're going to try and draw this exactly the same again, as close as possible. And it will obviously be slightly different because we've turned the stabilization down. Now I've drawn it slightly different. I'm going to move it along just a little bit, maybe down a little bit as well. And I'm just going to then zoom in. I'm just going to ever so slightly make some minor tweaks, just really small ones. Now, to draw each of these, if we wanted this to be the first shape and this to be the second shape, to draw each of those really smoothly would be very difficult. So what we can do is something called tweening, where the computer does that for us. If you click anywhere between the first and two keyframes, right click and choose shape tween. A shape tween will apply to any of these shape layers that we've got here. If you wanted to classic tween uh, one symbol to another symbol, you'd have to use the classic tween, but you wouldn't obviously be able to animate that frame by frame because uh, the symbol itself isn't editable. So you'd use that to move a symbol from one position to the other, but not squish or like um, redraw it or anything. Um, you could squish it, just couldn't redraw it. Let's hit shape tween to see if that works. Not too bad, actually. I'm used to it not working at all. Let's see what it looks like on the real thing here. All right, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add in some keyframes here now that we know it's working. And we're going to uh, change the last keyframes to the same color as the ocean. OK, because we obviously need this to loop. So it's going to come in and fade out again. Fade in and fade out again. OK, pretty happy with that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is select all of these keyframes right click uh, and choose convert to keyframes. And what that will do is change each one of these to an individual keyframe that we can then edit because you see how that's going really smoothly and the rest is kind of janky. And that's because this is animating now on every keyframe, which it was doing when it was a tween as well. Now we can go through and clear each of these keyframes like so. Takes a little while. So you can just use a shortcut shift F6 instead. like this keep going keep going and you'll notice that each time i do this it turns it into a normal frame but because we've got the shape tween applied it, it applies a little arrow just to indicate that it is still tweening it is still changing to fix that let's leave that one to fix that we can just grab all these layers right click remove shape tween now it looks exactly like our last one and it's a bit more janky yeah which is quite nice so now when we go back to our main scene, main ocean scene, and we zoom out a little bit, we turn off our sketch, we can see that we have our waves that come in and go out on a loop. Now, if you wanted to, you can do that for as many waves as you want. Uh, I'm going to do it by hand just because I, I quite like the way that looks, but that's just a quick introduction to how tweening works inside of symbols and stuff like that. You can leave it on the shape tween, absolutely. I just like it to be a little bit more janky than that uh, in this particular style. So what I'm going to do is delete this layer and I'm going to do it all by hand. Uh, I am going to fast forward through that because it will just take forever. So I'll see you on the other side. thing to note is that I'm putting each cluster of these little waves on its own layer uh, just because I find it easier to work that way um, if you want to come through and edit something a bit later on. So for example this section of lines here is on its own layer and this section of lines here is on its own layer just because it's a bit neater, it's a bit easier to work with uh, and you've got less chance of things going wrong if you need to come back and change something later. One thing you will need to know is once you've done all your little animation bits, which I think I'm quite happy with, you will need to hide your guide layer, even though it's outlined, because if you don't, when you drop back to your main scene, it will still be visible in there, which you don't want. So just uh, double click to get inside that ocean layer and hide that layer so that when you drop out, 
Oh, it's still there. Silly. That might be a setting. Um, hello, everyone. Post editing Matt here. Just a quick one to say that I'm an idiot. You just go to publish settings and uncheck this option for include hidden layers. Let's delete the layer. I think there's a setting in your preferences somewhere because this isn't fresh copy that says don't show um, hidden layers. So we'll just delete it for now. Uncheck include hidden layers. And I'll see if I can figure out what that is between now and next episode. Uncheck include hidden layers. So you can see we've got our background and it's looking pretty good if you do say so myself. If we turn the sketch back on, we can see how that's going to sit in relation to the rest of our content. Let's turn our um, alpha up a little bit as well, just on this layer. Oops. Uh, make sure that's selected on the object, not the layer itself. Otherwise, you'll apply a different type of alpha. So you can see how our waves there kind of match up with our waves um, in our over uh, main timeline. I might add, come back through and add a few more later on. Um, maybe not, though. We'll see. Let's work on the boat because this one's going to be its own little collection of layers, which will be um, quite interesting to animate. And then we'll continue to work um, on the rest of these layers. We'll come back and do the clouds, I think. Um, how long is this episode already? This is already 50 minutes long. Wow. Let's do the boat uh, and then we'll come back and we'll do the rest of this in um, the next episode as well. It's going to be a long series. <laughs> uh, okay. So we have our ocean. Let's do a boat layer. Now we're going to do this one slightly differently. I'm going to zoom into the boat like so, Ooh, really far. Um, and I'm just going to draw some reference shapes quickly uh, in a small brush. Make sure we turn our smoothing back up. Just going to draw some shapes for the boat. I'm not going to worry about getting them right at the moment because this will just act as a guide because we want to split some of these out onto their own layers. There we go. So let's select that first keyframe, which selects everything on that frame on the boat layer. Let's hit F8 and we'll turn this into boat graphic. And then we can drop inside it. Let's hide that and go inside. OK. So we've got our boat. Each of these separate elements probably should be on its own layer if you're going to want them to be animated, which we do, um, just so it's a little bit easier for you to work with. So we'll grab some layers, we'll hit F5, uh, and we'll call this boat base. We'll call this, um, uh, what's that word called? The, the thing that's the crow tech mast. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and we'll call this sails. OK, sweet. So let's uh, outline our bottom layer and lock it. And let's start drawing in our little boat. So we'll grab that middle sky color. I think is going to work quite well. Uh, we're going to turn our brush size down, which we've done. And we're just going to draw in the entire base of the boat with nice, smooth options. So we're going to do like so. Now I know. It's got a wobbly bottom, <laughs> but we're not going to draw that wobbly bottom. We're going to draw the whole thing and then hide it with a shape layer later on. So this is our first boat. Uh, what we're going to do, it, however, is draw the whole thing and then and then sort of like bob it up and down um, in different ways. So selecting what we've just drawn, because we're not going to have to redo each of these frames. I'm going to choose my darker color. Oops, like so. Uh, excuse me. I'm going to choose my darker color first. Select our shape layer. Um, and change our brush type in the options up here to paint within. So we've got um, tool. There we go. Under the tools palette, we're going to change this brush mode here from paint normal to paint selection. What that's going to do is make sure that when we draw something, it only appears within the selection that we have already selected. And I'm going to use that to my advantage to just fill in the inside or what we'd consider the inside of the boat. I'm just going to grab my lighter color 
neaten up that edge there so that it aligns slightly more with what I think is the edge of the boat. Looks pretty good. Then I'm going to turn back to my normal and I'm just going to smooth out whatever that was that just happened there. <laughs> I don't know what that was. We'll fix it. There we go. Oops. I messed that bit up. So we'll just fix that. <laughs> Lots of fixing things back and forth in Animate. There we go. So little bottom of our boat that we are happy with. Seems pretty good to me. Now we need to draw the mast. Now the mast I'm actually probably going to put on the same layer because I want the, the sails to sort of flap because um, they'd be separate to the mast, but the mast would move with the boat. So we'll grab a dark colour for the mast, maybe this dark purple. We'll select just this dark section and then we'll hit B. Uh, we'll go to our tool and we'll change to paint selection. And that will allow us to just draw there with a nice harsh line. We can then deselect, press B again, go back to paint normal and just draw the rest of the mast. There, that looks pretty good. Okay, so on a separate layer now for the sails, we're going to draw in some sails, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, let's draw them in this sort of light color here. Or do we want them to be this, this kind of white? Let's test. Let's draw with the white and see what that looks like outside of the symbol against the ocean. Fill that in with K, drop out of our option here. And I think that's gonna be, probably can't really see that against the ocean there. So we will color it in this kind of sky color. Cause then when you drop out, you will see it. Okay, quickly draw in the other sail here. Bit taller, bit shorter. Okay, that looks good. So we've got our boat. We can now delete our guide layer. Boom. So let's go back to normal rotation. On top of this, I'm going to create a new layer. Call this ocean. Grab our normal ocean color. And I'm just going to draw in a little wave. Beep, beep, beep. Now that's going to cut out the bottom of the boat. Now, it'll probably be best if we added even just a little bit of animation to this boat wave. Oops, excuse me. So I'm just hitting F7 here. And we're just going to loop in just a few frames where it does move just a little bit. Like that. Okay. Just we've got a little bit of motion on the top of the wave there. Again, the bottom doesn't matter because it's the same color as the wave beneath it. Um, that'll do for that many frames. So we'll just make sure that that loops nicely. Good. Now the whole thing's going to be moving in a minute. So whilst that looks slightly janky, what we can do is see in the real thing that uh, looks okay. Yeah. Accidentally on top of that little wave section there so we can move that. We can check with that still like on the sketch. Looks pretty okay. So we can position it wherever you want. Back inside the layer then, let's zoom in. And I'm gonna just have this boat sort of bob up and down in place, okay? So we're gonna grab the boat base and the boat sails. And we're gonna hit F6 and then Q. And that's gonna bring up the transform controls of both of these. We're gonna rotate it slightly to the right and move it ever so slightly down. And we'll do the same thing again. F6, slightly to the right, but a bit more down. So it's kind of bobbing a bit deeper. Then F6, we'll rotate it just a little bit and move it down just a little bit. Then we'll just have one where it goes down just a, literally a few frames. So we've got this. It's kind of speeding up then easing into it motion oops one thing is the bottom of the boat does poke out of our shape on some of these frames uh this last one look so what we'll do is we'll actually redo this layer in a second if we just delete that so we've got our boat bobbing down i'm gonna have it hold there for a little bit just create a new frame just because uh and then we'll have him come back up but first he'll come back up in slightly different won't he he'll come he'll rotate just a little bit come back up just a little bit F6 again, 
rotate a little bit, come back up a bit more. Then as it reaches its zenith, it's going to rotate just a touch, come up just a touch. Now I'm going to grab my first two frames, which are here, and I'm going to, holding Alt, drag them over until I can add in a new set of keyframes here, which is equal between them. Now when I select this, I know that these last two keyframes are the same as these first two keyframes, which means that these need to match up to create a perfect loop. So we'll just ease in, I'll maybe need an extra easer there. So we'll just create some more space, hit F6. And we'll just make sure that settles in nicely, like so. And we'll take a look at that. So we'll remove these layers now, these extra frames, sorry, so that we've got just the perfect loop. Let's add in a quick loop so we can see it moving up and down. So that creates a nice little bobbing loop, okay? Seems good to me. So it's time now to create the little wave that's gonna mask out the bottom of our boat here. So to do that, we'll create a layer on top and we're gonna just draw everything that we want to show. Now, this may seem backwards, but this is the way that Adobe Animate does it. So basically I'm gonna draw a shape over the top of everything that I want to be visible on this boat. Uh, and everything that this shape covers is gonna be visible when we turn this into a mask. For example, if I drag this above the boat base layer, because we don't care about the sails, we can then hit mask. And what that's gonna do is you can notice it's gonna chop off, if we unlock it, it's gonna chop off that section of the boat there so that when this guy starts bobbing around, he's gonna start bobbing around into the ocean. Now we're gonna add a little bit of animation to this by just hitting F7, uh, turning onion skin on, which I turned off. Uh, Draw something that's roughly the same, but with a slightly different bottom edge. We don't really care about the rest of the edges. Uh, do that a few times and then we'll loop these frames. So, like so. One more. And the reason you have to do it this way is because you can't inverse a mask without turning it into a movie clip and doing a bunch of other stuff inside of Adobe Animate. So we're doing it this way, which looks messy, but once it's, the mask is turned on, it doesn't obviously matter. So we will grab all of these, duplicate the frames, and then lock again. So that when we see our looping animation, we've got it going there. And that's the Amazon man, be right back. And there we have our little bobbing boat. Um, pretty happy with that. So let's drop out of our symbol and see what that looks like in our main timeline. Let's go to show frame and we can see, uh, oops, I've still got the looping turned on again. So we'll turn that off and we can see here's our little boat bobbing along in the ocean. It's kind of janky on one frame there. So let's see what that looks like. Why it's doing that. If we just control to zoom in, which frame is it that's being really janky? I think it's the first one. Yeah, it's because all the frames go down, look, and then it jumps right back up for this next frame. So what we'll do is on this fourth frame, we'll just shift that up a little bit. It'll be one, two, three, Four, that's where it loops again. So we'll shift that up a little bit. One, two, three, four. That's where it loops again. And we'll shift up a little bit. Now that should look a little bit smoother. Yeah, that looks okay. So we'll turn that mask on. Yeah, that loops quite well now. All right, wicked. So drop back out of here. Zoom back out. And now we obviously want this guy to travel across the screen a little bit. And that's simple. We'll just do that one with a motion tween. So if I'm going to grab this keyframe on the last of our uh, frame of our timeline here, hit F6, and then I'm just going to move him across the ocean just a little bit. Not too much because I don't want it to be too distracting. I'm going to right click any of the frames in between it and just hit classic tween. And what that's going to do is it's going to guess what I want that to do for the rest of the frame. And it's guessed correctly, just slowly drift across the ocean there. Okay. Now we could do what we did earlier and turn this to keyframes and break every other one, but I'm not super bothered about that. Um, because it looks janky enough as it's moving anyway. So that looks pretty good to me. Turn our sketch back on and see what we're working with. Um, if I go to my sketch layer here uh, and just reduce the opacity down a little bit, it's a bit too bright for me. And we can see that we're doing pretty good. All right, I think that's more than enough for episode one. This is gonna be a big, big series. Um, so in episode two, we'll work on the clouds and um, the hills and stuff like that, uh, as well as the river and the house, because that's all gonna be pretty much static. 
Uh, then we'll take a look at doing the trees, which we're going to have some cool animation on where the branches wiggle about. And then the final episode will probably be on this little bird down here is going to be the most complicated part. So I want him to sort of move his head around, crouch down, and then start to flap off across the screen. So don't know um, how these episodes are going to be structured, um, but hopefully you guys just enjoy following along um, and see if we can create this little animation together. So I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Tip Top. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching. In this series of videos, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started in the world of Adobe Animate. Let's do it. Tip -tot. Part two, exploring animation techniques. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Last time in Intro to Adobe Animate 2020, we built the flashing um, animating in place backgrounds that you saw here. Uh, and what I've done in the interim, as you can see in this little time lapse, is I've done the hills as well. Um, excuse me, my apologies to skip this. However, it is literally exactly the same technique as we did for the sky. Uh, I just drew a hill instead of the sky. Um, same goes for the river, that sort of thing. I just didn't want you guys to have to sit through this again when you've already seen it last episode. So I skipped it, we've done it now, and we can start the episode with this. This is it with our hills inside of Adobe Animate. Um, really happy with this now, it's looking pretty good. What we're going to tackle this episode is the more interesting animation of these clouds. Now, yes, we want the clouds in the background here to sort of drift across the screen a little bit, but I also kind of want them to sort of wave as if as if like the, the clouds themselves are being pushed over. So that's what we're going to tackle today, or at least first today. Just to give you a brief overview of what I did for the layers in these mountains here, I've literally got the mountains in the front and the mountains in the back. Uh, and they're just two separate layers like so. What we will do eventually is we'll probably have these drifting inwards a little bit from the edges of the screen. So we can probably just do that now if we wanted to. So I'm going to hit F6 on both of these frames at the end. So this is where we want their final positions to be. And then mountains front, we're just going to push until just where the edge of this drawing is touches the edge of our frame so that nothing, you know, um, untoward peeks out. And we'll do the same for mountains back here, but this one we can push a little bit further um, because we're pushing it sort of off screen this way. Grab both of these, right click on them and choose create classic tween. And what that's going to do is, as you can see, over time, they'll slowly drift in together as if the camera is pulling out a little bit. Um, do we want them to go inwards? We probably want them to reverse actually. So what we can do is grab all of these uh, frames like so right click on them and choose reverse keyframes like so and that's just going to have them now over time be drifting outwards instead of inwards nice and simple so let's look at that that looks pretty good okay just a nice slow drift barely perceptible but it is there awesome we're done with these now then so let's draw ourselves a cloud and get out of this really distracting workspace that we've got here i'm just going to rotate this around so that i've got a more comfortable drawing angle um, and we're just going to zoom in. Oops, that's way too far. I thought it was click to drag, but it's not. It's click to select area. We're just going to zoom in to something like that. Okay, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to grab my cloud color, which was the same color as our lightest piece of sky, like so. Uh, and I'm just going to hide everything. On top of these uh, ocean layer here, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to call this cloud right and I'm going to hide everything that I don't need to see apart from the sketch then I'm just going to take my first frame and be really careful really smooth just draw out this cloud you can see where I'm going to be going with this already hopefully We've got this kind of wavy cloud motion. Now, obviously, the rest of this is behind a tree, so I've just got to guess how I want that to go. I think I want it to peter out a little bit. Maybe quite suddenly, actually. Maybe like that. Or let's just add 
a little bit like this, just in case we have it drifting further than I expect. That looks pretty good. So we'll just fill that in with K. And there is our first cloud. So we'll stop having a wonky head and we'll see what we're working with. So we've got our cloud here. What I'm going to do is select that cloud, hit F8 and call it cloud right. Now, you probably guess what we're going to do. We're going to have the cloud drift slowly across the screen. So we're going to hit F6 to add in a new keyframe there. And we're just going to shift it gently across the screen like that. OK, that's probably enough of a distance. So let's hit create classic tween. And you'll see it'll start to move across the sky. However, we're interested in the inside of this for our animation. OK, so here we are inside our cloud. Now, this is quite a complicated one. So what I'm going to do is just create some new layers to illustrate what I want this animation to look like. So for example, I take a really simple cloud. It's got two bumps on one side and it's got two bumps on the other side. OK, let's fill that in. Let's use this as a guide layer. And on the layer on top, we're just going to hit, uh, let's create like a, like a nice light color so we can see what we're doing. We're going to duplicate this, this cloud. Okay, here's our first lump, like so. And voila, yeah. On the next frame, however, we want to basically treat each lump, <laughs> if that makes sense, uh, as if it were moving into the next lump. So this lump here is going to become this lump here. So if we drew it lump at a time, this lump would move slightly. Obviously, we'd fill in the rest of the cloud too. We'd create a new frame and it would get a little bit further towards becoming the next lump. New frame. And it would start to look a lot more like this lump. Next frame, it starts to look pretty much exactly like this lump. Yeah. So what we've got, if we looped that, would be this kind of motion like so. Then we go back over the same frames again, but this time we focus on this next lump next to it. So whilst it would start like that, it would then have to start moving to become this smaller lump next to it until it's almost exactly, you might have to duplicate a few frames, of course, until it's almost exactly that previous lump. And as you can see there, um, apart from where we need to fix this edge, this lump would then just stay the same and stay the same like that. You can see that that cloud is then sort of growing into itself down there. If you were to repeat that process on the other side, which we'll quickly do just for the sake of argument, so this lump would then start to move and then again, getting closer. Remembering, of course, all this section is going to be filled in. Um, getting closer. How many frames have I got left? Just the one. Yep. And then would be pretty much exactly this lump. OK, then we go back over and we do this lump becoming this lump. So it moves a little bit to become that next lump. Moves a little bit further to become that next lump. And a little bit further to become the next lump. And then almost entirely becomes that lump. I know I said the word lump quite a bit. We can see we've got that one moving down. So now we just need this one to be kind of staying in place. Jiggling a little bit, obviously. Like so we've now got these clouds sort of moving almost in perfect loop. Then we just need to make sure, go back to the very middle and we'd get back to that original section. So as this is starting to disappear, we'd have to have a new lump beginning to form here and here. And then beginning to fill out and form and regrow that middle section until we get a perfect loop. OK, now you can see how in structure that looks weird until it's finished. OK, now I wanted to illustrate with that because this is a nice 
quick version of what I'm going to be doing with this, which is obviously going to take a lot, lot longer. And again, I'm going to time lapse it because otherwise we'll be here for six hours. This concept that I just did with this little test one is all I'm going to do with this cloud. I think for this cloud, here is going to be the middle. I don't know. I think I want these trees to slide in completely. So they're going to start completely off screen. So I am going to draw everything okay, that's over here. If they don't start completely off screen, then they will start mostly off screen, which means as this cloud moves over anyway, I'm going to need to have animated it. So I don't think it's going to be a waste of time. What I just did with this cloud, I'm going to do with this big cloud now. Okay, so I'll see you on the other side of doing that. And if anything interesting happens, I'll stop the time lapse and I'll jump in to chatting to you guys. In the meantime, though, sit back and watch me work really, really fast. So we've got our first billowing section of cloud done now, and you can see that's kind of getting its perfect loop started to go. So we're going to just continue that entire process all the way down the line onto the next sections of the cloud here. It can get a little bit distracting with um, onion skin on. Um, as you're moving incrementally, there's no sort of easing on this. You can work with it off uh, if you find it too distracting. Um, but what I'm just going to do is just reduce these down to just show the previous one frames instead of two. Obviously, as you reach the end of the cloud, the movements are going to become less erratic because the uh, actual sort of depth and height of these cloud bumps is much, much less. So you want to make sure, because it's moving in the same amount of time, that it takes smaller, obviously, increments to get there because there's less space to move. You want to make sure that it evens out, comes nice and smooth movements as opposed to the big changes from the, from the edge of the cloud that we were working on earlier. So as it starts to become the looped section here, for example, just bring those shapes in with a little bit more fluidity, making sure to follow the lines of the original shape closer and closer so it starts to get this sort of bulging kind of nice motion to it. So reaching the end of one of the clouds now, all I need to do is essentially for this section is try and accurately trace the same thing as much as possible, but still leaving in a little bit of that boil. Um, so it sort of tumulates in place a little bit. Um, and then what I think I'm going to do is once this whole cloud is done, I'm going to come back and literally chop off the bottom of it. So I'll grab my selection tool and I'll do this, which gives it a really nice, clean cut edge to that bottom of, this, uh, of the cloud there. I will do that at the end though, however, i just undo that um, because obviously at the moment we need to make sure that we've got all the motion correct before we start just removing sections. Okay, so let's look at our first section of cloud. Obviously we haven't added the bottom in yet. We haven't neatened up that bit. We'll just delete these other two layers just because they're quite distracting and we now know the concept. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good, actually. Uh, there's some bits which jump quite heavily, uh, and the loop at the moment... Yeah, look at that. It's got that kind of woomph, woomph. And that's because where we've reached the previous um, frames, it's kind of settled into that motion where we've had big motion and then easing into the little motion. So that looks really good. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, we're just now going to do the other side, 
and make sure the bottom's nice and neat and then we'll be done with this cloud. Okay, and there we have it, our completely looping cloud, which I must say looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. So let's drop back into our main scene. Uh, we can zoom out uh, by holding control, not alt. I always hold alt. Uh, see what that looks like in the main center, which looks pretty good, if you ask me. Um, it's already drifting slightly across the page, so I might push that just a little bit further. If we go to cloud right, layer and just push that in because the, by that time the tree is going to have come in and covered it up anyway so let's have it start out a bit further like this that looks pretty good so it's actually moving across the thing quite well okay pretty happy with that oh one thing i uh, do need to fix though is the fact that that bottom layer oh excuse me i clicked in the wrong scene there uh, the fact that that bottom layer is still visible, this one here. So we just need to delete that. Uh, there you go. That looks much better. So that previously had that bottom one showing through all the time, so it would flash through occasionally. So uh, we'll delete that layer, go back to our main scene, and there you go. That looks a lot nicer. All right. Pretty cool. Let's turn these other layers back on. We've got our sky base, our sky, our ocean. Well, actually, let's, let's have it looping and turn them back on a bit, bit at a time. So we have our sky base and our sky, which currently looks like that. Okay, kind of janky and weird until, of course, you start to add in things like the ocean, which hides up that janky bottom area. Looking pretty good. Now we can add back in our cloud. Quite nice. Add back in our boat. There he is moving across the bottom there. Add in our mountains, our other set of mountains, and there you go, looking pretty good. All right, so let's pop the sketch back on top and see what is up next on the agenda. I think this time around we will add in uh, this little house down the bottom because there isn't actually animation on that bit. If you wanted to, you could add some smoke coming out the chimney in the same way that we added these clouds just now. But uh, I'm just going to keep it static, I think. Otherwise, it's going to get a bit too distracting. So we'll add that in because it's quite a complicated little design with lots of little layers and things like that. Uh, and then we will call it an episode. So. I'm going to attach this to the mountains. Um, this set of mountains so that as it moves across, this house moves with it. What I'm actually going to do is draw it on its own layer out here first, because otherwise I won't be able to see the sketch. So I'm just going to add a new layer on top. And again, we're just going to draw this uh, guy all in one layer because it's not going to move. And we're just going to use a collection of cool little tools to do so. So uh, we're going to need our dark purple color. First of all, we've got three shades of purple. I think I'm going to need the middle shade. Uh, let's do the lighter shade of purple just first so we can see what we're doing. So for this, I'm just, just going to trace the house. So we need uh, this kind of wall section we'll do neatly and correctly. Like so. I'm basically going to work our way up from the base to the fence in front. So we'll work our way up in layers. Making sure we get these little steps in. We can fill that in. There we go. 
Okay. Oops, so we'll just drag this below the sketch layer though, so we can still see what we're doing. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. Uh, we will now grab our darker purple color, select um, what we've currently got, and go back to our tool where we can choose paint selection. Uh, and then we will paint in this lighter facade on the front here. So we've got our darker purple. I'm gonna paint in these steps. Like that. And like that. And that will actually paint the same shape so that when we deselect it, Oh, sorry, did I just do all of that in the same color? No, I didn't, I'm good. Uh, we can then just fill in that section on the right there. We'll grab our darkest, darkest color, and we'll just select this bit here, and then we'll just roughly see where that door's supposed to go. And we'll just fill in the door. Um, we don't need to paint selection on this one though, so what we'll do is we'll just uh, oops, I just hit everything. <laughs> just hide the um, thing for now. There we go, pretty good. Paint in that bit nice and dark. So now we've got our entire door section here. Um, we can grab our darker purple and just draw the edge of the door frame like that. Oops, just painted the whole thing because I'm a fool. So grab our dark color there, then select this, then paint in the dark bit. Yep, that looks pretty good. So we've got the door of our um, system here. Sorry if I'm squinting a lot. It's because we've got the filming light obviously on up there to, to light me. Uh, and it's kind of hard to see what's going on. Uh, so you see me doing this. <laughs> uh, that's probably why. Uh, cool. So we've got the steps to the house. Um, we can draw the fence now. This one's a bit easier because we don't have to select anything. We can just go to paint behind. So if we have our layer selected, for simplicity's sake, we can just hide everything else so that when we click here, we're not actually selecting another layer. We'll just do that and then deselect. Uh, we can go to our tools on our brush here and just choose paint behind. Then we can grab our darkest color here and just roughly draw in the fence. And what that will do is it will hide anything behind what we've already painted. That looks pretty good. Drawing the posts. And you can just keep referencing the previous layer or you can wing it. Okay, there's nothing else behind apart from the back section of this roof, so we'll do that. If we select this uh, orangey color here, still on paint behind. Oh, nice. Now we change it from paint behind to paint normal because we're going to be hiding on top of, uh, oh, don't know what happened there. Uh, painting the current wall. God, what words am I saying? Painting the um, roof on top of the wall. Wow. <laughs> Those words are difficult for me, apparently. So we can then meet all that up, which is nice here. Looks good. Fill that in. Uh, we'll do the same. We'll eyedropper, uh, or we'll just select our darker color here, and we can draw the fence in. But before we draw the fence, we will just quickly draw the shadow, um, which is going to be in this darker red color, if I remember correctly. And we'll go to paint behind. That's the slightly darker color than the ground that it's currently on. Fill that in. And the reason I do all this on one layer, you could do it on separate layers if you wanted to, but the reason I do it all on one layer is so that you can do stuff like that where you just quickly draw the shape that you need. And as long as it hits the other content on the layer, you don't need, even need to fill in 
Um, oh God, that raise is rather big. Uh, you don't even need to fill in all the bits because it will do it for you. Okay, that's pretty good. So we'll grab our black again. This time, paint normal. Well, actually, no, we'll leave it on paint behind for now so that we can do these sections of the fence quite easily. That's good. And then change to paint normal because we want it to go obviously on top of the shadow as well as everything else. Uh, we'll leave that there. There's the rest of the fence. Oops. Okay, looks pretty good. So let's grab our um, reddish color here, this one. And we'll just quickly draw in these little um, stepping stones as well. So there'll be no animation on this section. It's literally just a house. Like I said, if you wanted to, you could add smoke to the chimney in the same way we added smoke to the cloud up there. I will just quickly do that second cloud as well, whilst I remember. Um, once I've done these stepping stones. So just roughly drawing these in because they're not going to move. So they're not really going to draw the viewer's eye. Because there'll be all sorts of other stuff going on. And voila. Back to normal there. And zoom out. So I'm now going to grab, excuse me, fix that. Redo that. There we go. I'm now going to grab everything that's on this layer, not the sketch layer, everything that's on this house layer, and cut it. I'm then going to go inside our hill layer here, and I'm going to Control Shift V to paste it in place. Oops, which doesn't correlate. Sorry, silly me, um, because it's inside a symbol. But we can see that we can still see the uh, top of our house there. So we can drag this guy into position, like so. And that looks pretty good. So we can drop back out, hide our sketch layer, and let's see what we've got so far. Oops, uh, the house I've only put on that first layer because I did that wrong. So if I go back into the house symbol before I paste, I'll put that on its own layer like a clever person and reposition it. There we go. And now when we drop back out and hide this and hit play, it won't flash all over the place. So looking pretty good so far. Obviously, most of the animation is going to be on those trees in the front and the bird. Uh, but I think this looks pretty good with the sun sort of shimmering around in the background there. So let's quickly add ourselves a new cloud. So we'll go to cloud right and we'll just add in a new layer and hit cloud left. Now we could just copy and paste the frames, but I want to introduce you guys to the library. Um, so now that we've turned this guy into a symbol, he will appear in our library and we can reuse that symbol over and over again, which is one of the many benefits of using symbols. If you go to your library tab like so, you'll see that every symbol we've created so far is inside of our library and we can preview all of the animation for those as well. So what I can do now is on my new layer, cloud left, I can drag out a second instance of this cloud and it will play on screen like the other one, animating in all the same ways. What you can do as well is modify this, transform flip horizontal, for example, bring back your sketch layer so you can see where it's supposed to be, way high in the sky, like so. And we now have two copies of our cloud. So we'll just do the usual like we did before with F6 to insert a keyframe where we want it to end up. Go back to the first keyframe, move it out a little bit, like so, and hit create classic tween. And then we've got our second cloud. So this is really the power of symbols. You can do the animation once and use it over and over and over again. Um, if you wanted it to be slightly different as well, you could squash and, and stretch it. So if we go to here, we could hit Q, make it a bit of a shorter cloud. And then obviously in our second keyframe, it will actually stretch out over time which is quite useful as well, just to add a bit of animation and variation in it. If you want it to be at a different time as well, you can do that. So you can hit cloud right and copy and paste uh, or duplicate this symbol and call this one cloud left. Uh, we then obviously have to uh, 
um, redo this animation here. So we'll just make a new blank layer. And because we've got that nice looping animation, but if you wanted it to sort of start at a different time, you can just grab these first few frames and make it start instead from the middle here by just dragging them past it. Then if you put them all back in the middle, the first frame actually becomes the middle one. Um, so that when you watch the whole thing, it starts at a different point, but still loops flawlessly. If you then drop back to your main scene and bring in your cloud left instead of cloud right, and then uh, transform and flip horizontal, you can see that it actually moves at a different time than your other, um, your other cloud. Still, oops, I think I, I messed up that actually, the frames. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, remove those frames there. You can see that it animates at a different time, different pulsing time than your other cloud, which does help if you want it to look not exactly the same. So we can reposition this guy. Oops. Uh, reposition him back up here. Re-add in that last keyframe. Re-push him back over. Maybe that much. And hit classic tween. And then you've got a different timed animation, which you might prefer the look of um, without having to do too much extra work. Now, all these bits around the edge might be quite distracting. So if you want to see what your animation is actually going to look like within a frame, you can hit Control Enter instead of Enter, which will export a test movie. Uh, and then you can scale this down. Um, God, if I could actually see what I'm doing because of this filming light. You can actually scale this down to hide all the excess from your frame and you'll see the original bit there. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm quite happy with that. It's moving in a way that I'd want. Um, next episode, we're going to take a look at animating the last elements of this, which are the trees in the foreground and then a really complicated little section on the bird, which I think will be episode four, if I'm being perfectly honest. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you all next time on the next episode of TipTop. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching. In this series of videos, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started in the world of Adobe Animate. Let's do it. Tip Tut. Part 3 Working non destructively. Hello everybody and welcome back to Adobe Animate and TipTart. Today we are taking a look at adding the trees to our little scene that we've got building here. Uh, you can see that already we started animating some clouds, the sky in the background as well as the hills and the little boat there. Today we're going to be taking a look at our sketch layer here and adding these trees in the front as you can see. The next episode we'll be doing this bird in the bottom right. So without any further ado I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, one thing I will say is the layout for this will be slightly different because I'm testing out a new graphics tablet, but other than that, it's exactly the same content. Um, I've just collapsed some panels like this to give myself a bit more space to work with because it's a smaller resolution. So let's jump right in. I'm going to grab my brush tool, my fluid brush tool, uh, and I'm just going to give myself a bit more screen space by dragging this palette down. I have a blank layer here that I'm going to be drawing my trees on, and I'm going to go to the first frame here so I know that I'm working in. Uh, the first instance, and I'm just going to do my best to draw a nice straight line. Through down where I want the tree to be. That looks pretty good. So press the selection tool there and I'll just position it until I'm happy and then zoom out with control plus or minus. I'm going to go back to my brush tool and holding shift. I'm just going to quickly draw some corners for it and pressing K. I'm going to fill that in. Just make sure I'm on the right color here by selecting this color from the color palette. And I'm going to select this shape and this is going to be the trunk of the tree on the right. So um, we're going to need its own layer for this because it's going to be animating sort of separately. So we're going to hit F8, to turn that into a symbol. That symbol is going to be trunk right. Oops, uh, trunk right uh, V2 because I already tested this out. Apologies for that. Uh, and we're going to double click to enter that symbol. I'm going to press the V selection tool to just neaten off all these little corners here, just so that I've got nice neat edges to work with. Now you can see if we hide this layer that about halfway up the tree, we've got this sort of lighter section. 
Um, if I bring up my original uh, illustration here, you can see what that looks like in the original. So you've got this top half of the tree that's a little bit lighter than the bottom half of the tree. So we're going to do that now. We've got our trunk. We know that it's roughly halfway up the page. So what we can do if we want to make, make sure that we're being very accurate is we can just come in and draw ourselves a little mark here. And we know that that's roughly where that's going to be. Let's grab our lighter purple color here. And with our selection tool selected, which is the shortcut V, we're going to come up to the properties um, and we're going to hit B to bring up our brush tool. Now, what that's going to allow us to do is allow us to start working with um, our brush with a paint selection mode. So we should be able to click one of these options here under tool and go to paint selection. And that means that no matter where we draw, it's only going to draw paint on the bit where we actually select it to be drawn. So I'm just going to come in and separate out our colors with a line like so. And I'm going to hit K and I'm going to fill in, oops, excuse me. Uh, I didn't think, then they go purposely or completely cut that off rather. So I'm going to just press V again, V again, paint these corners a bit harder. And that should allow us then to just select the top section. We can hit K and fill that in. That's going to give us our solid color cut there. So we can remove that bit now if we want. Then I can press I to eye drop at the bottom bit. Go back to my tool and just return painting to normal. And just start to bring in some of this shading from before. Now, if you wanted to, you could leave that tool option uh, on paint selection and just select the top area here, like so, to add in the darker bits. Uh, eyedropper, this lighter color, select the bottom section, and paint in some dark shades too. That might be a quicker and easier way to do it, just depends on how you work. So then as well as that, on our original sketch, you can see that we've got these sort of pink lines that run through our trunk. Uh, I'm just going to sort of have a go at doing these again. I'm not going to try and replicate the original one exactly. I'm going to do these, however, on a new layer. On top, I'm going to grab my color from my color palette, which is this uh, pinkish color, I believe. Pretty short. Uh, does that look right? Let's have a look. Uh, no, it's the next darker pink. This one, probably. Yeah, that looks better. So we're going to um, draw this on our new layer. So to do so, we're going to need to make sure that our brush is on paint normal, like so. And then we can get to it. I'm just going to draw in some nice big sweeps that I'm hoping the engine will smooth out for me. That looks pretty good. Come in with this one too. And I think there's one sort of coming down like that from here. Like so. That looks okay. So what we're going to do then is just neaten up our edges again. Just grab there, grab here, just to make it a little bit neater. And then down here, I'm just going to grab my lasso tool, lock off so I don't accidentally select that bottom layer too. Uh, make sure I'm on the polygonal lasso tool. And just chop off bit that I don't want. Cool, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to drop out now of this symbol and you can see that we've got our tree on the right there. That's pretty close to the original design so I'm not going to worry too much. Now um, you might be wondering whether or not we're going to create separate layers for each of our uh, trees, branches. So a layer for this branch and this branch and this branch down here etc. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a series of layers and symbols and animations inside one symbol. So this trunk right symbol is going to contain everything that we need to do uh, all of the animation. And I'll show you why in a minute. Now, first thing we're going to do, however, is go to about a second in and add a keyframe with F6. Then we can go back to the first frame and just shift this guy out of frame a little bit like so. And we can right click between it and choose create classic tween. Then we can go up to our properties of this classic tween here. And we can put in an ease if we want to. Ease in and out, for example, maybe a slightly more intense ease in and out. 
and that will slide in our shape. I don't really like that one, so let's just go to effect, mm, ease in, ease in and out. Let's go to just quad. Let's have quad. Yeah, that looks quite nice. Cool. Now, everything else we've done so far has been animated frame by frame. So that means it's going to have this janky 12 frames per second, whereas this a piece of motion here and the sliding hills here are going to be moving at 24 frames per second. Uh, we'll fix that at the very end when we take it into After Effects, basically. But I'm quite happy with the way that that tree shifts in. Now, if we were to do all of this separately, we'd have to do the same animation for the trunks and things um, inside of, uh, on separate layers here in the main timeline, which is fine, you can do that. However, uh, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for ourselves. Instead, I'm going to go inside this uh, composition here uh, and I'm going to uh, add the branches and stuff that we need in here. OK, so to make sure that it lines up with the original sketch, I'm going to make sure I'm on frame 24 and then I'll drop inside it. And then obviously all the branches and things are going to line up. But inside our animation here, we're going to be just on the first frame, which is fine. So these two layers are going to be our main trunk layers. So if you wanted to, you could select everything you've done here like so, hit F8 again and call this trunk right inner. And that's going to make that a single symbol on a single layer so that we can then start adding our other stuff on layers as well. For example, this branch. So I'm just going to rotate our canvas slightly, bring up my brush tool, go to our nice purple color and try and draw in this branch in a nice smooth motion. Thank the Lord for smoothing because I'm not very good. <laughs> so I'm quite happy with that. That's fine. You know, if you wanted to, you could come back through and you could sort of straighten out some of these edges, make it a bit more geometric looking. Like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Fine. Um, we're going to drag this layer below and we'll rename the top one trunk and we'll rename this one branch top. We'll hit F8 on branch top and we'll call it branch top graphic. Inside this graphic, we're going to add the shading that you can see on our original sketch here. So it's going to have two of these purple lines and then this really dark, really, really dark, um, sort of almost black shaded section that you can see on this original sketch just here. OK, that's all the shading that we've got on this one. So quite simple. We can do all that on one layer inside of that trunk section. So we'll just drop inside like so. We'll make sure we've got our shape selected. Go to our paint, choose the darkest possible paint. Go to our tool options and choose paint selection. And then we'll just bring in whoosh, a nice bit of shading like that. Like so, and I'm actually going to extend that shading all the way out because we're going to be rotating and spinning this branch section. So you want to make sure, oops, I painted the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, we want to make sure that if I just change that back to the right color. Nice. Go to our darker color there, then paint that in. That should then do that. Yes, it has. Good. We'll just fill that section in too uh, and add in a little bit of texture again, a little bit of transitions to the shading. Sorry, that was my mistake. Um, we're going to be wanting rotating this around and stuff, which means we want that shading put in there. We'll select this section here. We'll go and grab, oops, excuse me. This is why it changes color because I did it wrong. You grab this first, then you select your shape. Then you draw your nice curved lines and it won't change color on you. Um, good. Happy with that. We'll drop out of this for now back to um, our trunk right Composition, uh, composition, uh, symbol, sorry, been working too much in After Effects recently. And we'll add another layer and we'll call this branch top top. And then we're just drawing this little, this little guy here. So again, we grab our normal um, purple brush color. We extend slightly past where we need it to be. And we just paint in this little guy. Oops, excuse me, I pulled that up. Accidentally hit delete. 
no, I did not accidentally hit delete. I'm painting with the selection still. <laughs> so you see, you can't rush this sort of thing. You gotta go slowly and I'm trying to rush because I'm trying to do the tutorial concisely. Hopefully you guys don't just mind sticking around for these slightly longer tutorials. So we'll grab our darkest color and we'll grab our section here and we'll change it to tool. Oops, don't want that to be a drawing object. Excuse me. We'll grab our paint selection brush and we'll just paint in a little bit of shadow. Looks pretty good, nice. Uh, branch top, we will hit F8 on and we'll call it branch top top, the graphic. Nice. Let's check the color of our leaf there. It's this kind of dark um, red with this orange on line going through it. And we'll draw our leaf. So I'm just going to draw this leaf on a layer on the bottom called leaf. And I'll grab my, um, let's grab this color. Should we grab this color or this color? Let's grab this color, make it brighter. Why the hell not? Grab our solid color, grab our solid brush, go to our tools, change it to paint normal. Draw ourselves our leaf. Oosh. Fill that leaf in. Grab our orange color. Oops. So I accidentally had drawing mode on. Ah, that's probably worth mentioning. If when you finish drawing it, it looks like this, it's because you've got object drawing mode on. Um, you can hit control B to break it apart, but it's because you've gone to object here and you've got this toggle create object. You want to just make sure that that's turned off. So um, you'll have expand to fill, create object, break apart, convert to symbol, create a new paintbrush. You want to make sure that that is toggled off. Then when you come to draw something, it won't be a object anymore. Okay. There we go, object drawing mode, off that one. And then when you draw things, it won't be an object. Wow. <laughs> okay, select that, draw in the stem of your leaf. Making sure that we've got paint selection on. Cool, there is our leaf. Let's select that guy, hit F8, call him leaf. And now it's time to start making sure that we've pinned all of this correctly so that when we start animating it about, it looks good. Now we've already taken care of the tree sliding in. Whew. We know it takes a second and we know it eases in and out. So we just need to replicate that on our um, other layers inside of the symbol. We know it takes a second. So what we'll do is we will give ourselves a bit of breathing room here. Okay, so now we have all sections of our tree on individual layers with individual symbols inside. Uh, and if you wanted to animate this traditionally, you'd then be moving your anchor points of each section towards the base where you want them to rotate. You then give yourself a bit of space, like so. Add in a new keyframe. Oops, excuse me, it's six. Add in a new keyframe and start moving these elements around. So you'd rotate this section. You don't have to move and compensate for here. You then have to move and compensate for here. You could then do a classic tween and sort of animate all these bits moving around. But what I'm gonna show you to do, I think is cooler and also allows me to show you an additional technique uh, inside Adobe Animate. So I'm just gonna undo all of that and we're going to take a look at animating this with the bone tool, which is quite a cool tool for simple animations like this. So to do so, you just need to make sure that you've got nothing else on your page apart from the things you want to add to your bone, because it just makes things a little bit easier. And we're going to press M to bring up our bone tool. And you can see that creates a little cursor with a small bone next to it. Now, basically clicking and dragging anywhere over a symbol will create a bone that you can think of like a bone in your body. Yeah, so the bone of this tree trunk Will probably be something like this going upwards like so uh, and that's going to add that turn that bone into like a ligature basically so what we're going to do is drag and drop until we hover over another symbol and that's going to add that to the bone structure so i'll just do that again drag and drop from the bottom and let go when you're hovering over where you want the anchor point of your next bone ligament or in this case the next branch to be and you'll see whoop, 
that will connect that symbol to the bone structure. We then drag until we find the base of this smaller branch, which adds that to the bone structure, and drag until we find the base of this leaf, which adds that to the bone structure. If you then press V uh, after pressing uh, M, or you'll notice it goes to the selection tool, but when you hover over one of your bones, you'll be able to click and drag on a point to move this around. Oops, kind of doing that wrong. Say. Click and drag on this point here, and you'll be able to move everything in this bone structure system uh, as if it were attached to each other, which is wee really useful for us. So, for example, if I were to take this guy, I could start to push and wiggle this tree around as if it was in the wind. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing now with our animations. Um, I am going to give myself a bit of time. I'm going to well, first of all, I'm going to give myself a load of frames like this, just loads and loads of frames. Maybe well, I don't know enough that the it covers the entire animation. Let's say hundred and something frames. We'll go back to frame one and check that that is then, that'll be frame 24 of this um, instance. So at this point now, what we'd like to do is go back and delete our previous keyframes. So remove this one here, clear keyframe, remove this one, remove classic tween. The reason we do that is just so that uh, Adobe Animate has this weird thing where if there's sometimes existing keyframes, it will reset a graphic to the first frame of its own timeline if you've already created keyframes. So it would like jump through the animation, which is not what we want, obviously. Now we want to move the whole tree. So what we'll do is we'll do all of our little animations first, and then we'll come back and we'll add that initial sweeping movement back in. However, first of all, we need to make sure that our bones of our tree are in the right order because right now they've actually swapped around. So we can just right click on this, choose arrange and center back. And then we'll right click on this little bone, arrange center back, and we'll right click on this leaf, even though it's really overlap, arrange center back, that's fine. So the initial flush of the tree, as it will be moving forward onto frame, we kind of want it to lean back a bit, and then it would stop, the, the bottom would hit where we want it to be, it would then push forward, and then kind of sway to a stop. So that initial rush of what we'd want a keyframe and we want that to sort of just push back ever so slightly this branch would lift maybe our leaf would just tilt back a bit and we do that a bit more dramatically and if you get anything weird like this when you're dragging the bone and the leaf is kind of going crazy sometimes it's a bit hard to control little tiny bones like that but that's not a worry because what you can do is just select that single bone and just bring up the transform controls and just edit that manually. And that will still be respected when it comes to the animation process. You can see that's then tilting back. And we want that to lean, um, so that'd be slow to fast, this one. So we'd select anywhere between those first two keyframes and bring up our properties panel. And then when you go to easing, you can choose ease uh, at the start fast. So we want simple fast. Easy. So you can see that kind of rushes whoop, boom, like that. Let's see if that's actually applied. Simple, fast. And then we want the strength all the way up. There we go. So that's fast to slow, which is what we want because it will go ha, and then settle back in. Now, if you wanted that to go the other way, I imagine you would just select the strength to be reversed. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, Maybe we want it that way because it'd be pushing and then it would whip back. So we'll have it whip, take maybe this many frames to sort of whip. Oops, excuse me. So there, what happened was I had all of them selected. Uh, I didn't have my bone system selected. You want to make sure that you've got the little bone symbol uh, highlighted. So it's going to whip forward. We're going to really drag this guy forward, drag this guy. That's going to make this leaf turn backwards quite a bit. And then that little section here would go fast to slow. So we'll go simple, fast this way. And it's going to go boom, nice. And then we'll add in another little bit of roughly the same amount of time, um, keyframe here. 
and we'll just drag him back up a bit. This guy would rotate around here like that. This bone might drag this way a bit. This one will just add a little bit of easing. Uh, stop and start slow. All the way. And then we'll have it just settle back into its original position. Which we'll try and get as accurate as possible by using the sketch guide. Like this. So where is our original sketch? Ah, oh, it's actually way further back than our original sketch. So, oh, what we could actually probably do is just copy this keyframe and paste it there. Objects cannot be added to an inverse kinematics frame. All right, fair enough, we'll do it manually. <laughs> Don't know why that is. We'll just have it settle back down in a somewhat original position. We're happy with it. Let's add a bit of easing to this one. We'll add um, start and stop slow. Drag that out. Let's see what that looks like. Just going to rush in. Oh, that looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Why is that so weird? Let's reset all of these. Easing none. Why does that look so weird? Boom. Back down. Um. I don't know why that looks so weird, but maybe, maybe we're doing too much. Maybe we just need that. Let's give it a go. So we'll drop outside of this. We'll go back to 24. So everything uh, previously in this animation I had planned out, but this is the bit that I'm kind of figuring out as I go, which is probably why it's a bit janky. Uh, I do apologize for that. So we'll go to our first frame here, go to our 24th frame, and we'll just move that into position. We can actually see from the sketch we're a little bit off there. So um, if we go inside uh, this, that's because it's leaning back. So as long as it settles into something that's somewhat familiar. So maybe we'll just add in another keyframe here and we'll just now resettle this into its original position just so it's got a little bit more feedback. So if I just use this like that and then we'll just grab this guy. That looks pretty good. So have a good poof. Is it because it's stopping and starting slow? We just want it to stop slow. So simple slow like that. And then this one would be simple slow like that. Try that the other way. There, that looks a bit nicer. Try that one. Yeah, that looks good. So just playing around with the settings there until I got something that I was happy with. Then when we add our classic twin to here, and this has got, the thing is about Adobe Animate, it's so confusing. This has now got a completely different um, easing animation like software. Why isn't this the same as that other easing software? It's so dumb. I hate it. This one's going to be ease in and out quart. That's fine. So we'll just select that one. Ooh. And we'll just have it take a bit longer. Maybe two seconds. Yeah. And look up. Then we can look. Save our work first. Right, so that there is that weird little, you'll notice that that sort of jumps back to the first frame. So the way we can fix that is to go to our properties of our um, 
graphic here and there is a way that you can choose uh, the frame that that is on. So you've got our frame options and oops, I just opened up the actions here. Let me just fix that. Uh, you can choose the frame that's on. So if we double click, this should be on frame 49. But I bet if we go inside it, yeah, it's not, it's on there. So it needs to be over there. So when we come back, that's jumping around. So what we actually want is this uh, frame, this is this graphic to be on a certain frame. Now, how you do that in 2020, I have no idea. Create a motion tree and create classic between. It'll probably be in the frame picker window, which I think is this one. Now you can see it's on frame 24, but we want it to be on frame 49 of that animation. And this is just because that weird um, keyframing thing I said before. So that's then going to move from frame 49 onwards, which is stopping the motion. Boom. That's going to come into position again. So now that we've done that, we can add in just a little bit more. What I'd like is just a little bit more casual drifting with this leaf. I'm literally going to come in and just add in a few keyframes where all that happens is that the leaf moves. And then look at that and you'll think, oof. Now it looks like that leaf isn't moving at all. Actually, yes, no, sorry, it rotates like that. Uh, it would just need to go from there to there. It would need to face the other way. So if we open up our panel here, it would lean back. And then as it's rushing forward, by that point here, it would need to have rotated to like this way a bit. That's weird, just doing that oddly. So we'll grab our bone tool here and we'll just try and, oh God. Try and rotate that, there we go. To like that way, without moving the tree too much. Cause then it will come in, whoosh. Yeah, that looks better. Cool, all right. Okay, so that is our first tree finished. Um, obviously, we don't want it to disappear randomly by the end of the animation, but that's something as simple as just increasing the amount of frames that we've got here. So if I come in and I just go all the way over here, add in a bunch of frames. Uh, that means it will then last the entire length of the animation that we want in the future. So I'm just going to go through and do that to the other tree, um, but I won't keep you for that one because uh, that was a long enough tutorial by itself and it is literally the exact same process. I'm just drawing a slightly different tree. Um, so I do appreciate you sticking around. Sorry, this one was a bit rambling. Uh, I'm trying to get my mojo back after having a bit of a break um, for sort of personal and health reasons. So uh, I'm not really uh, got my mojo back yet. So sorry for that. Hopefully it's still useful for you guys. Um, Adobe Animate is a very long and, and sort of patient program anyway with this myriad of quirks. So uh, hopefully you guys still get something from this. Have a good one. See you next time. Keep learning. And we'll go over the final part of this animation, which is frame by frame animating that little bird. Thank you very much. And I'll see you then. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching. In this series of videos, you'll learn everything you need to know to get started in the world of Adobe Animate. Let's do it. Tip tut. Part four, finalization, tweaking and export. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome back to Intro to Adobe Animate. Last time we took a look at animating these trees sliding in there 
Uh, we did our first one on camera, the one on the right, um, and as you can see from inside the symbol that it's grouped in, it's just a case of using the bone tool to um, reposition the branches and segments of that section. And then off camera, I just did the same thing to this one over here. Um, obviously slightly different tree, but exactly the same. Our final step then is to add this bird that we can see on the sketch layer here. And to do that, we're going to um, use a combination of all the techniques that we've done so far, which is why we've left it to last. So I'm just going to add in a new layer and then I'm going to do something really useful, which is tap this view only active layer button. And that's just going to collapse away everything that I don't need um, just so that I can have as much space as possible on screen to show this bird. So I'm going to scrub to the point where the branch stops moving and I'm going to hit F6 to add a keyframe. We're going to start our local animation here uh, and then work backwards and forwards from that. So we know that at this point when the bird lands, the branch has stopped moving. So uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab my sort of light green um, brush here and my normal brush tool. Ignore that warning. Um, um, I'm just going to start sketching out the first po pose for this bird. Uh, I'm going to do this first pose fully, um, i.e. I'm going to draw him in properly. And the rest of these poses on camera, I'm just going to do the sketches. And then I'll time lapse through uh, the rest of the bits because you don't need to see me drawing the same bird over and over again, but it will be useful to hear my thought process when it comes to why I made the decisions I did when animating. So, starting in the middle, so that we know that bird's going to be rooted on the branch. Hit K there to fill that guy in. Then I'm going to go back up to my orange brush here, and I'm going to change my tool settings to be paint behind. I'm going to decrease the size of my brush for this one. Um, in fact, maybe I'll go even smaller because we're going to be outlining stuff. Uh, that's going to paint that beak behind there. And then I'll add in uh, his legs, which are the darkest purple black color here. Again, still on paint behind. And we'll just have him settled on the branch, like so. Perfect. Let's bring back our other layers and hide our sketch layer because we don't need it anymore. Boom. I'm going to drag my bird layer all the way to the top and of course rename it bird because lab labeling your layers is very important. Also important is staying energized. So I've got a bit of coffee. Right. We have the base of our bird. So now that we've got that, I'm just going to hit uh, F8 and call this bird. It's a graphic, that's fine. Zoom out a little bit and uh, start adding in the shapes that's going to make the bird actually look like a bird. <laughs> uh, we're going to select this shape here and I'm going to choose uh, in my brush tool options, paint selection. Deselect it for a moment so that when I choose this darker color, it doesn't uh, repaint the whole bird. And then I'm just going to draw in some shapes for its wings and its butt, like so. And I'm tempted. Would there be an eye? Would you be able to see an eye from here? Yeah, I think you should be able to see one eye. Should that have like a little whoop? No, that's too much. Okay, that looks pretty good. Happy with that. Um, so we use that as our reference frame for our first layer. Now we need to add in a whole bunch of frames here um, because where we started our bird in the middle of our timeline, uh, that's going to now be the first frame of that animation. We want to go to our frame picker uh, and actually make sure it's on the 45th frame so that when we start animating, we know we're in the right place. So we've got 45 there, that's fine. Now when we drop inside here, we'll be on the 45th frame and we can animate backwards and forwards as we like. So 
because we're going to be animating on twos, I'm just going to hit F6 on the 46th frame because we're animating on twos and 45 doesn't go into two. Uh, and I'm just going to delete everything before that. What I will also do is hit Control C here to copy that to the clipboard just in case I need it. I'll also hit F8, call it bird inner, or let's call it bird reference. So we can bring back that original bird at any point that we want. I'm going to delete that and then I'm going to hit paste in place to bring back the editable um, paint version of the bird. Now I'm going to add a layer underneath that for our sketches, just so that I don't break anything. Now, I want this bird to fly in shortly before the branch is settled, so we'll do that first. Uh, and we're just going to kind of try and go um, straight ahead on this. A lot of the time you'll do keyframe poses, so um, I might give that a go, and then later on we'll go straight ahead, which is just animating front to back. Keyframing is animating the key points of your animation, every point where movement stops going in one direction and starts going in another. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then you do the in-betweens, which is called tweening. So the first thing we want is this bird to land. So we just want to roughly sketch out. Oh, excuse me, I've still got paint behind on there. And I'll choose a darker color. So what I quite like to do is uh, if I lock off this top layer, uh, let's actually bring the sketch on top for now. What I quite like to do to make sure I'm maintaining scale quickly is I will just sketch over any parts I know that are going to be consistent. Um, just roughly, like so. Then grab all that artwork and move it to where I want that new position to be. So I can hit Q, for example, to, to rotate this uh, because we're going to have the bird sort of flopping in and landing. So L would grab that lasso, Q would turn the wing and just roughly repositioning. So now I've got a good base that I know is the right size um, for when I want this bird to land. So his body is going to kind of be like this with his tail coming out and his little legs leaning in for a landing. And his wings are going to be sort of back out like that. So he's going to come in and move that over two frames. Oops, excuse me, that was the wrong layer. We're working on the top, aren't we? Move that over two frames. Boom, boom. So let's add in a new keyframe there because um, what I'm going to do on this previous one is stretch this guy out a little bit, rotate him a little bit, and move him up. And then on this frame, I'm going to delete and turn on my onion skin tool. Now, I want this bird's movements to be quite snappy, like, you know, is that, as if it was like a little bird that actually moves. You always see them kind of whipping their heads around really quickly. So luckily for us, that means there won't be much in the way of um, in-betweening. So what I'm going to do is just roughly draw out where I want this guy to land. Like so. He's still going to have his wings up, I think, for this, this frame. He's just coming in. And we'll worry about the positioning. So you can shift the sort of the whole thing, which is good. His tail is going to be pushing up like that. So boom. Let's add in another keyframe here. I'm going to shift these back again. And we want this like as he lands, he's going to have to go to come back up. So we'll have him kind of pushing, then his top wing. Um, and both bottom wings actually were probably would have him compressing. So his tail might whip around like that and his front wings might be coming out. Boom, boom. And he'd have little curved legs. And his beak would be down. Then we'd need a frame where he kind of whips around. to his original position. Now the beak there, I'm kind of stretching, squashing and stretching it as it whips from sort of this position around to this position. Then you'd see this kind of, and if you use that kind of stretched um, imagery, it makes it feel more snappy. So we'd bring his wings maybe back a little bit. 
his tail would be maybe up a little bit higher. And uh, his wing would be just maybe out a little bit here. And his legs would be the same. So he'd have to land, really cushion himself in. So we'd definitely need another frame in there. This time I'm just going to hit F6 and duplicate this frame. And I'm just going to squash and stretch him to fit the position. Because remember, these are only just rough sketches for the moment. So he's going to squash and stretch. So drag that guy back a bit. Again, we're just blocking out the key moments and then we'll worry about the timing in a minute. And then I'll just quickly draw a finishing sketch where he's in the original position. Right, so let's get ourselves some timings. Boom. You can see already, boom, boom. That looks all right. But first of all, that would need, I think, to stretch out a bit more. Like that. And then that definitely needs to hold this position for a bit longer. before he starts to whip back. And then I think it just needs one more settling, one more settling frame here. So it just needs one where it's kind of almost there, but not quite. Maybe his feathers are a bit ruffled. And it's more about that movement of the beak there for that one. So let's bring that guy back in. That looks pretty good. Boom. 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 So you can see like there, the tail is kind of really twisting upwards. Um, and then as it lands, it shoots the other way. And I think what we need is, in fact, that tail to push even further on that one. And then as he's coming back up, it needs to kind of swing back into position a little bit more. So it would definitely be stretching like that. Boom. Boom. Nice. Okay, so we've got him settled. He's landed. So we'll make sure that finished landing pose is in time with the actual sketch we've done. Landing. Boom. Then we just want him to sort of twitch about for a few frames and then he's going to flap and launch off. So we'll hit another keyframe here. Uh, and we'll just basically draw him with his head looking in the different direction. So he'll be looking over there instead. Um, I want his body to end up back in the same position, but his wings would definitely like shift a little bit for stabilization. I think you can have to temporarily hide that back layer. Like that. So he might just go like this. But what we definitely do is if we add in two keyframes. First of all, he'd definitely, um, yeah, that's like that, isn't it? Yeah. So first of all, if we select this guy, he definitely like squeeze into the motion a little bit. So he'd shift down before popping back up. overshooting a little bit and then settling. See, that's got that little subtle movement. Then we've got that. Boom. Then let's have him just duplicate that motion. So we'll grab those frames, hold alt, drag them along. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll add in another keyframe here just so that um, we can flip and reverse these keyframes by selecting them and choosing reverse frames. Then we can clear this keyframe. If you don't do that, it will create some weird little um, blank keyframes all over the place. Boom. There you go, he's gone back. Looks pretty good. Then we'll have him really lean into a flap and then just 
off off of the um off the stage. So we are going to need another keyframe. What I'm going to do this time is just go straight into the um. So as he leans down, his beak would probably drop to build power. So we'll do that. He'd open up his wings. As wide as he can. A little butt would stick out. His tail would definitely lift. His little legs would scrunch a little bit. Right, so we need the um, settling frame for that one. So we'd have his wings be up a little bit more. His butt be like that. His whole body would just be slightly higher. And his tail would be lower as it reaches into it. We definitely need this guy to settle, really settle and squish into this position. So we'll just do a couple frames of him building power. And then we'll have one frame of him just absolutely launching. Now a cool thing I've seen is where people leave, um, when they have like a ball, yeah, and then it lands and squishes. Um, when they want to go back up with loads of power, Usually what they'll do is have it sort of stretch out like that. And if this was the floor, you know, what I've seen some people do, which gives it really oomph, is they'll actually leave it touching the floor on that frame. And then on the next frame, have it like all the way up there. And that really adds like a snappy, like <clears throat> to the movement. So that's what I'm going to try and do with this bird here. So I'm going to squash and stretch his head a little bit. He's also going to be then looking back up into the sky. So maybe what we can do is have his beak be like, don't know whether that's going to work or not. So we'll just maybe do it like that. And we're going to have him really stretch out his body. Like, boom. Almost like he's made of jello. Jelly. Jello. Been watching too much American TV there. Have his foot be in exactly the same space. His legs are stretching out. And his wings are just really stretched out. Bam. Bam. And his tail's bam. All the way down there. Like that. And on the next frame, he's just like way up here. Um, actually, we could probably just copy and shift this guy up. Then we'll have him disappear. So I want him to go off frame. Like up here. And then we're going to have a little bird flapping away in the distance, I think. So let's see what that looks like. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. So I think all that needs is one leading frame from that animation. So we'll just add in a little bit of easing here. So he'll start to move his body down. His beak's going to kind of snap down with it, I think. And we'll just make his... Uh, his wings start to come out like that. And this wing starts to come out like that. His body starts to squash down. His tail starts to lift. Like so. His legs start to bend like that. And then, yeah. So he's gone off screen. And then we want him to just, after a while, this little shape. Uh, oh, excuse me, that's got a, um, and then disappear. And after a while, we want this little shape to just sort of come back in the distance here. Like so. Maybe he starts pushing his wings 
downwards. And then as he gets smaller and smaller, he'll just disappear into the distance. See what that looks like. I literally just did that straight ahead without thinking. So let's see if that looks any good. Zoom. That looks okay. I think his body needs to settle more. And then he's kind of lifting, so he'd actually go down at that point. Back up. And then, yeah. Maybe we won't do that bit. Who knows? I think it'll do for now, for the sake of this tutorial. Um, I'll probably tidy it up in the uh, in this time lapse. So he comes in, he lands, he looks around, he flaps off, and he disappears. That looks okay. That land looks a bit clunky. I think he needs a more boom. He's got a real big land, but he kind of then just. Um, he needs to kind of lean into it more before he starts to come back up. So I think what we'll do is we'll add in another frame there, hit F6, and we'll just have him really lean in before he starts to snap back up. Bam, bam, bam. I think maybe what needs to happen is he needs to overshoot it a little bit. So if we move this two frames back, like so, and then um, the final frames like this, what we'll do is we'll have him kind of just overshoot his beak there. Yes, Phoebe, what is it, baby? Nothing. Right, I see. Sorry, my cat's moaning. That's all she does. You've been fed. You've had loads of treats. I've opened the window for you a billion times. You decided you didn't want to go out because it's cold. Yeah, that looks right. Let's add in another settling frame. Just a really subtle one. Uh, shimmy those back. And... Just have him settle down. We should bring him to match that guy roughly. Good. That looks pretty good to me. All right. So those are the rough frames for our bird. Let's look at them in context of the animation. Um, so from the start, the trees come in. Oh. What we haven't done there is uh, drag that first frame back and then set our frame picker to be frame one. Boom, that looks quite nice. We do need some more time apparently though. Um, so we will grab our last keyframes and we'll just drag them out a whole bunch. Oops, I pulled something up there. Oh no, I didn't. It just took a while to catch up. Oh, I did pull something up there. <laughs> Let's give myself a bit of breathing room and see what we're working with. See how many frames I need for my board. So I need a minimum of, uh, let's say 100 and 170 frames. All oh, this is just bump, isn't it? So we'll remove those. I need 170 frames for this animation. We are currently on 115. So what I'll do is I'll just F5 over here, like that, unlock these, and see if we can't just drag them. If that kind of breaks it, then it breaks it. But I don't think it will. No. Cool. Now let's look at the final thing. Comes in. Bird lands. Phew. Yeah, that was pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what I might do, because we've just extended that animation a bit, is I'll grab some of my um, background mountain layers and I'll just push them a little bit further out so that we don't lose that um, sense of motion in the mountains here. 
Luckily, because the tree's in the way, I can afford to push it a little bit further. And that just adds some of that motion back in. I might come back and just make these leaves drift a little bit uh, later on, just in the same way I did before by adding those bone tool animations. But for now, I think it's time to clean up our bird sketch. So we know that the timings are right, so we can do all of this inside our bird layer, which I did not click. There we go. Uh, and for simplicity's sake, if you wanted to, you could even just open this up from the library so you don't see any of this background stuff. Um, if you go to your library here and you open up Bulb, You'll see that it opens it up in kind of like its own little isolated world um, with no other distractions. So it's really easy to uh, draw, which is what I think I'm going to do. So I'm going to delete this guy here, clear keyframe, because what I'm going to do is bring in from the library bird reference. Uh, oops, that layer was locked. Bird reference, nice. Uh, and then I'm just going to pop bird reference near him so that I can eyedropper the colors that I need. Um, I can eyedropper uh, the colors that I need. I can use it for scale referencing and stuff like that. Uh, and it also means that it's not going to like jump weirdly if I don't draw it exactly like that previous frame. So we're going to go through and animate this now. What I'm going to do with you guys is I'm going to do this section with you and then the rest of it I'll do um, just in a time lapse. So let's do it. I'm going to drag my uh, sketch layer to the bottom and I'm going to turn it to outline mode so it's slightly less distracting and then I'm going to lock it and that just allows me to see uh, just the current frame that I'm working on. If you want to use the onion skin tool again, you can unlock it and work from there. Um, but it will mean that as you're drawing, you might accidentally select it. Um, so I just like to lock it away and then unlock it when I want to check it against the reference of the other layers. Um, so let's add in a new layer on top. We'll drag our reference layer down to the very bottom and we'll start doing some of these keyframes here. So we have our first uh, bird like here, like so. I'm gonna eyedropper that green, go to my brush tool, and I'm gonna start going crazy. So, carefully now, because this is where you actually need to refine your sketch work. You need to start making sure that your work is clean, that the edges of your shapes are smooth, that you're happy with the final shape. And luckily for us, this kind of technique here, means that you can just draw these solid lines and you can then just add in these little textured lines here to bring the shape back. So it's actually going to be quite quick and easy for us, I think. That tail tapers off a bit thinly, so we'll just thin, thicken that out. Uh, now, what I might do is grab my paint behind tool um, I pop out the properties for now. I'm gonna think I'm gonna pop out the properties and bring them over here because I'm gonna be switching between this stuff quite often. I might also pop out as well my swatches and do that and pop them up here too, just so that I can really quickly grab the colors that I need. And when I'm doing things like paint selection, for example, oops, uh, excuse me, when I'm doing things like paint selection. I can switch between stuff really simply and easily. So uh, we need to add in indications of the wings separating. So that top wing, it would obviously be like over there. Remember this is only on frame, on screen rather for a few seconds. Not even that, a few frames, sorry. So whilst that doesn't excuse sloppiness, it certainly does mean that, especially in these squash and stretch frames, you can be quite liberal. Draw in his eye. Grab our darker colors. Make sure we've got his legs in there. Oops, I need to swap to paint behind for that one now. Like so, I have this other leg coming in. For a landing. And then we've got our orange beak. Bam, all right. So the next frame is quite far away from that. Um, I could try and squash and stretch this guy into position. But I might just redraw it. 
uh, and then just, yeah, let's just redraw it. So we've got our green color again. We can leave it on paint behind because there's nothing on this layer. So, and now I'm just gonna flick back and forth to make sure that I've got the sort of right sizes. That his head's not suddenly become a little bit smaller. For example, his wings are kind of got a similar taper to them. All these little details that make things look somewhat okay. His body's going to be really stretching at this point because he's quite a floppy bird. His tail is going to be push coming out all the way. Like so. Looks all right. Let's get that beak in there. Uh, let's get his legs in too. Reaching out to the land on the branch here. So really stretching. Like so. And let's go to paint normal. Drawing a little stretched eye. Select our bird. Go to paint selection. And draw in some of our bird shapes. Like so. That's pretty good. Yep, after that, move on to the next frame then. Um, for some reason it seems to be preferring zooming over here. So I'm just gonna pop those things over onto the other side of the screen. Now here's where we need to start making sure we're really constraining our sizes properly because the bird's sort of coming to a stop. So at this point it might be useful to turn your onion skin back on and just make sure that you don't select that layer. It should be fine because we're not doing any actually manual selection. Um, on our stage. So our bird has landed on the branch. Oops, still got paint selection on. Our bird's landed on the branch. We filled in his head. His body is kind of splooshing forward and all the weights shifting towards his belly and his wings have completely come to the other way. Boom. Wing number one, boom, wing number two, fill those in, lock this layer again, so it's a bit easier to see what we're doing. And this tail is really whipping, so what I might do is like a really big squash and stretch here. And the faster the movement, the bigger the squash and stretch. I accidentally turned that into an object there by misclicking with my pen. So we'll just break those down again with control B. Remember that from last episode. And we'll make sure that when we've got our tool selected, brush options are turned off, uh, object options are turned off. My mistake there. So uh, we need our legs now. So we'll turn that to paint behind. And at this point, he's kind of rooted on the branch. So it's kind of important that his feet stay in the same position. Uh, we need our beak paint behind. Nice. And uh, we need to select our bird. Ah, you can see there that's got a little brush still. So we don't want that. Select our bird, go to the dark green. Oops. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Select our dark green, go to the bird, then change to um, paint selection. And then at this point, I guess we want a separation line there, as well as there, and there, and here. My cat's moaning to go out, so I'm just going to go let her out, and then I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we've got our bird, he's got an eyeball. It's true. And let's take a look. Zoom. Nice. Zoom. Cool. It's coming in. So let's start looking at um, his recovery frames. So he's really down there. 
Um, and then he wants to get even more squished. So for this one, I'm going to draw this frame. And then I think the next three are just him squishing. So I don't need to redraw those, which is good. We'll go to here. We'll go to paint behind. I'll try and pan when it lets me. And we'll just draw ourselves a nice little boy. Where is my board? Remember that from Iron Man 2? I want my board. I remember that. Uh, he wants his tail to be really squished. Boosh, like that. He wants his beak to be kind of down facing. And he wants some legs, I'm sure. So we'll give him some legs. Again, making sure now that his feet are rooted that they don't change too much per frame. Select, nope, select our color, then select our bird, then go to paint selection. Separate out those wings and the tail. Now, uh, oh, and the eye. Now we don't have to re redraw this frame. We can just hit F6 uh, and we can pin where his feet are and we can just squash him a little bit. Then we can hit, uh, I think he's squashing again in this frame. Is that right? Let's hit, let's just delete that. Yeah, I think we can just get away with just squashing him again. We don't need that tail to go that far. Um, because in the next frame, he's kind of whipping back anyway. And I think I overdid it with that tail. So we'll just squash him down. Nice. F7 on that frame there. And now it's back to redrawing our bird. So we'll bring up his head. Like so. Good, looking good. Let's get the uh, curve of his back and the curve of his body in there too. As well as the whip of that tail. And then we need paint behind, which is still on. And this is where we can start to just really squash and stretch that beak a little bit <laughs> as he whips it around. Uh, he's straightened his legs, but his feet should remain. I mean, he's turning his feet, to be fair. So we could probably have his heel stay in the same place, but his toes are going to start to face the other way as he turns his feet around. Select the darker color, select our bird. Go to paint selection. Uh, now is where we need to start following these lines, these styles of lines here. because. Uh, we're starting to mimic our initial pose. He's going to be whipping around. Woo! He looks kind of derpy there, but don't worry. He won't for long. Because he's going to start settling in. And at this point, he's just... Bam. So, uh, now what I'm going to do is copy this guy. And I think I want him to be that frame. So I'm going to hit F6 there, paste him in place. We'll pop him like that. We'll break him apart. And we'll delete his legs. I don't like the way his feet look. I prefer the way I've drawn him this way around. So we'll have him... Um, we just use this frame for reference. About there. Where have his feet be? looking that way like that so that's the frame that we want this little section to end up on so what we can do is just f6 q root and do the overshoot frames from here and then copy f6 delete paste in place so we've got Boom, boom. And now what I need to do is draw this 
final transitionary frame, which is going to look pretty close to what we want. So uh, I'm going to turn off onion skin for this because that sketch is pretty accurate to where we want it to be. Apart from the legs, so I'll do the legs first. So we want these legs to kind of pop, pop, pop. Be transitioning in that motion, that, that twisting motion. Then we'll get our body and just paint normal for a second. Yeah. So now we can kind of roughly follow the sketch. Cover up these little black bits so that we can fill in this bird. That's a bit hefty over there, so we'll just neaten that section up. Like that. Nice. Uh, so let's draw in the tail. Bam. Go back to painting behind. And we'll just fix that beak. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we just need our darker sections with paint selection. And we'll whip that guy up there, whip that guy there, here and here, like so. I kind of freaks out now when I got the positioning wrong. Yeah, he kind of jumps down and then goes back. So we want his eye to be more like there-ish. Yes, I'll do. Cool. Oops, I've been drawing his butt, his butt section wrong there too. So we'll just fix that. Um, Cause it goes up like this, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, I'll repin my swatches and things up here. And we'll take a look at what we got. So he comes in. Nice. Boom. Boom. That looks pretty good, I think. So if we hide our sketch layer. There. Pretty happy with that. So let's just watch that on loop a few times. Yeah, that looks quite nice. So that's the process that I'm going to continue with now for the rest of these frames. Um, exactly the same thing. So you don't need to watch me do that. I'll do it in fast forward. Uh, and then I'll see you on the other side of our little animation segment. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Okay, so there we have it. That is our bird fully animated. He drops into frame, looks around a little bit and launches himself off before shooting off into the distance. So let's have a look at that on our stage. So we'll save this here and we can go back to our normal timeline. So we're inside the bird symbol at the moment. So we just need to go back to scene one. Let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on and start from the beginning. She's come in, little bird lands, looks around. Pew, launches himself off into the distance. That looks pretty good. Kind of, kind of quick there on the entry. So what I might do is grab our bird symbol, 
and you can see it kind of just pops in here. So I'm just literally going to grab this frame, hold Alt, drag it this way a little bit, and just kind of move him up, touch, maybe squash and stretch him a bit. And then this one will just even out the distance between those two frames. Yeah, that's much better. Uh, one little extra bit of frame makes all the difference. So you'll be pleased to know that we are done inside of Adobe Animate. We're going to hit Control Enter to create ourselves our little test Swift and have a look at it full screen. It looks pretty good. Now the last step is just to add a little bit of texture and stuff to this inside of After Effects. So we're going to jump into there uh, and just do the final touches. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects. What we're going to do is go to our project panel, hit Control I <coughs> to import our AA2020 file or whatever it is that you've called it. It might ask you to create a folder if you do just hit yes. Make sure it's somewhere near your project just for convenience. And that's going to create a composition for you with the name of your Swift file, which if you scrub through, you should see you've got your entire animation ready to go. I'm just going to drop it into quarter resolution so that we can watch it go. And as you can see, it's maintained all of the animation that we've done previously, but it's also <coughs> um, separated out each of our layers into different Swift files inside of uh, After Effects, which is going to be really useful for us because we're going to add some nice rough and edges and some nice posterized time effects to smooth out some of these animations. So if you can see inside Adobe Animate here, some of our animations are done frame by frame, such as the bird, but some of them, like the movement of these trees and things, are done um, with motion tweens. Now, our bird is actually on 12 frames per second because we've animated every second frame, but our rest of our animation is on 24 frames per second because it's using these um, motion tweens that animate every single frame. If you want to fix that, it's very simple. You just need to create an uh, adjustment layer, which is Control, Alt, and Y. And then using your effects and presets panel up here, uh, or for me, I've got a shortcut. Uh, I'm going to type in posterize, and then I want the effect to posterize time. And I change that frame rate to 12. And what that does is it will just cut out every second frame. And because we did all of the animation on twos, um, it will cut out the frames of the tre trees, the motion tweens of the trees, but it won't cut out any of the motion of the birds or anything like that because uh, that's already animated at 12 frames a second. So if we pre-render this little section now, you'll see it looks a little bit more, boop, 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 a little bit more janky, which is nice. That's the effect that we want. So we have our adjustment layer, like so. Uh, what I want to do now is roughen up some of these edges a little bit. It looks a little bit too clean for me. Uh, we could add a uh, roughen edges to this adjustment layer and it will roughen everything below it. But let me, show you what happens when you do that. If we just type in roughen edges and we increase the roughen, you'll notice it will just roughen all of the edges around the edge of the canvas, which is technically what we told it to do. So what we're going to be doing instead is just taking our sky layers. So for example, we use this one here as our first example, and we're just going to apply our roughen edges directly to that. Now it is only going to affect the edge of the canvas or edge of that layer. So that is obviously only going to affect this section up here, none of this. If you wanted it to affect this, you can. You just have to separate out the layers. For me, I'm happy with it just affecting this edge border here. So what I'm going to do is just increase the complexity of this a little bit. That looks quite nice. Maybe bring this up to, say, 15. Oh, that's a bit much, actually, 15. Let's have 12. Yeah, that's good. Uh, edge sharpness, bring it up to about 3. Brings back in some of that crunchiness. And as you can see, that just takes the edges here and kind of like roughens them up, which is nice. Then we can just, once you're happy with that effect, copy and paste it to each layer. See that one on the ocean looks a bit too rough. So we'll just reduce that down to maybe eight. Edge sharpness maybe down to 1.5 instead. That's pretty good. Then we can do the same for these cloud layers. Cloud right, cloud left, the boat. Whoa, that boat is way too much. So we'll turn that border down to about four. Mountains at the back, looks good. Mountains at the front, looks good. Apart from the edge there, so we'll just have to fix that. The trees, ooh, a bit too much again, so we'll just drop that down to about a four. Yep. Trees left, we'll do the same. Drop it down to about a four. And all these steps are entirely optional. It's just something that I quite like. That bird looks a bit derpy, so again, we'll drop him down to about four as well. Now you can see we've got all these edges here. So to fix that, you literally just need to grab your scale and maybe put it up to 101 or something uh, rather than 100%. So 
so 101. And I'm kind of rushing through this, but that's because it's entirely optional. Um, you really don't need to do it. Just something that I enjoy. Make, I think it makes it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more cool. I probably will go back in and um, separate out these layers. Let's see how easy that is to do. I think in the sky, yeah, we've actually got this sky already kind of on its own layers. So what I'm going to do is just cut these, go back to my first frame, add in a few more layers here, paste them, cut this one, paste it, reposition that sun, just check that it all looks good still. Nice. So we will update that FLA and Swift file. Uh, now that won't update here, um, but it also you'll have to re-import like this. So what you can do is just import like so, import the same file again, it will create a new series of folders for it. Unfortunately, it doesn't auto update, which to me is completely baffling. You can delete the composition that you're not using as well as the older folder if you wanted to. So I'm just going to drag these two layers into this folder and delete that one. Then I'm going to grab both of these layers. Uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. I also need the base sky layer because that's now different. So we'll take you, you, and you. So that one, that one, and that one are new. Delete those. Delete the sky layer in here. Grab our new sky layer and our new other two layers and pop them in. Make sure they're in the right order. And then add our rough and edges effect to each of them. So effect controls, we'll just copy that from the uh, ocean layer. Go to our sky base layer, paste that. Is that about right? I think I did 12, didn't I? For these sky layers. Yeah, they look really rough. So we'll do 12 for that one. We'll do eight for that one. That's pretty good. And we'll do maybe four for this one. Yeah, that looks quite nice. So now we've got all of our rough and edges happening. We'll just save so that we don't lose anything. Uh, we can scrub through, see that we're happy. Yep, sounds good. Uh, and the last thing that I like to do is just add a little bit of noise. Uh, usually that's 10% and it's not color. Uh, and that just adds this kind of nice graininess to it as well, which is something that people seem to like. And then just export, which I won't go, I won't cover because you literally just need to take this, open up media encoder, drag and drop and hit play and it'll be totally fine. So we'll just quickly do that. Uh, and then we are completely done. And there we have it, our completely finished Adobe Animate animation. Uh, the last little touches in After Effects are entirely optional. If you like that clean look, you can absolutely keep it. It's totally up to you. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey, you guys. Uh, if anyone has stuck it out to the end, congratulations. You're an absolute legend. Um, I hope you found this a little bit useful. Uh, I, I know sort of episode three, I got a bit rough. I was having a tough time. I could get interrupted. So um, I, I felt like the quality of it was still good enough. Um, but hopefully you guys can sort of muddle along Long through and create something that you're happy with. Um, if you do create something, let me know. Show me on social media, just at Tip Tut Zone, uh, and I'll give you feedback and comments and stuff. Um, thank you so much for joining me on this journey, you guys. I've had a lot of fun with this one, and hopefully, I'll see you all next time on another episode of Tip Tut. <laughs>